His Daughter's Teacher. Written by Hannah Jo Abbott. Copyright Hannah Jo Abbott. Chapter 1. Ryan Baker's life had taken an unexpected turn. He used to dream of a perfect family life. Wife, a couple of kids, house in the suburbs. What more could he want? After a long day of work at his management consulting firm, he could go home to his wife and kids and enjoy life as a family dot. Instead, he placed an order for pickup at the local Chinese place before he pulled into the parking lot of his daughter's summer camp program. Only a couple of weeks before she would be headed off to first grade. Dot. Ryan cut the engine and sat in the car. Dozens of kids ran around the fields, some kicking a soccer ball, others playing a game of tag, some sat in groups talking or drawing pictures. He could see Nora from a distance. She sat on the edge of a set of bleachers. Alone. He ran his fingers through his short, dark hair and sighed. If only he knew how to help her make friends. He hated to see her by herself and know she hadn't made any friends the whole summer. What was it like for her to spend her days feeling alone? That he might know something about. Of course, he couldn't teach her how to make friends. He didn't really have any himself. Sure, he had colleagues at work, and spending his days working in different businesses gave him the opportunity to meet new people all the time. But friends? Real friends? He couldn't list any dot. Ryan forced a smile as he climbed from his car and made his way to Nora. Hey, sweetheart. Nora smiled for him and ran to greet him. Hey, daddy. He held his arms open and she hugged him tight around the waist. He wished he could wrap her up and keep her there forever. At six years old, she had already experienced enough hurt for the rest of her life. Ryan wished he could keep her from any more dot. Are you ready to go pick up some dinner? Nora nodded but remained quiet. Grab your backpack while I check you out and we'll get going. Nora did as she was told. She was a great kid, really. Ryan hardly ever had to tell her to do something more than once, and he never raised his voice at her. When needed, a stern look was enough. He was thankful for that but also hated knowing that she was always working for his approval lot. His mouth turned downward, and he lowered his eyebrows as he mulled over how he could do better for her. It was hard when he knew what she really needed was something he couldn't give her, a mom dot. Nora came running, and Ryan forced a smile for her. He wrapped an arm around her shoulders and squeezed her as they walked towards the car dot. Chinese? Nora asked. Chinese, Ryan said dot. Nora smiled. My favorite. Asterisk 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 Michaela Wilkes practically cheered as she reached the bottom of yet another cardboard box. She placed the books on the shelf with a sign that read Book Nook and stepped back to survey the space. The multicolored carpet with the alphabet looked perfect with the circles for her students to sit on dot. Feeling pleased, she took a seat in her desk chair and surveyed the rest of the room. Her first-grade classroom held four round tables with child-sized chairs gathered around them. Michaela couldn't wait for children to fill those chairs. It had always been her dream to teach first grade, probably because her favorite teacher had been her first-grade teacher. That was when she knew she wanted to teach one day. Growing up, she would put on her pretend glasses, name badge, and pull her hair up in a ponytail for career day. I want to be a teacher, she would proudly say. She still felt that way, and she had never wavered from her plan. The part she didn't talk about was that she had always wanted to be a wife and a mom too. But now at 33, she wasn't sure that was in the cards for her. She had resigned herself that her students were her kids. And her love life? That just didn't seem like it was going to happen. Hey, are you almost done? Her friend, Claire, poked her head in her room. Michaela let out a deep breath and held her hands up in the air. I'm nowhere close to being done. But we still have a few more days, before open house. I'll be ready by then. Do you think it ever gets easier? What? Setting up our rooms? Yes. Claire collapsed into a chair that was much too small for her, her knees bumping into her chest as she wrapped her arms around them. 
Every year I think, I know how I want my room to look, it will be simple. And every year I'm here till the last minute trying to put finishing touches on something. Michaela nodded. I feel the same way. I always come up with something new to try. And even if I plan to set everything up the exact same way, it's still a lot of stuff to haul in and get just right. Claire dropped her head into her hands and let out a groan. I guess we're doomed to never have an easy setup week. I'm exhausted. You want to go get some dinner? I'd love to. But I'm tired too. Want to pick something up and take it to my apartment? I just want to zone out and watch a movie. Sounds great. I'll grab my keys. Michaela turned back to her room and made a mental note of what she needed to finish. She still had to label all her students' seats and cubbies. Maybe she could work on that while they watched a movie. Grabbing her supplies, she shoved them in her bag. She took one last look before she flipped off the light. Tomorrow she would be back and it would only be a week and a half before the room was full of brand new first graders eager to start a new year. Dot. And Michaela would be more excited than all of them. Chapter 2 Ryan set the plastic takeout bag on the table. Nora, get plates and forks. They might be eating takeout, but they could still sit at the table and eat on real dishes. He lifted the first box out of the bag and stopped. Where's the soup? His frustration began to rise as he double-checked that it wasn't in the bag. He would have to call and complain, but even though he desperately wanted the soup, he didn't feel like driving all the way back to the restaurant. He flipped open the styrofoam box and his face reddened. This was not his order. Nora quietly placed two plates and forks on the table. Ryan let out a long sigh and picked up his keys. Come on, we have to go back. Asterisk 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 no, Michaela whispered in disappointment. This is supposed to be sesame chicken. It's beef and broccoli. And I didn't order soup. Ugh. I thought the bag felt a little heavy. Bummer. Claire said, digging into her own food. Do you want to just eat that? Michaela wrinkled her nose. No way. You pick out a movie, and I'll just run it back. For as many times as she wished she lived in one of the nice neighborhoods in town, it sure was nice being close to all the shops in her little apartment. I'll be back soon. For minutes later, she pulled into the parking lot. Carrying her bag of food, while someone else's bag of food, she walked into the restaurant. There were a number of Chinese places in town, but this was her favorite. She wouldn't let one mistake change her opinion. A man stood at the counter, and Michaela waited for him to finish before she approached. A small girl stood beside him, her hands folded in front of her and her gaze fixed on the floor. Dot. The man spoke calmly, but firmly. This is not what I ordered. I took it home and had to drive all the way back. I would like a refund of my order. I'm sorry, sir, the woman at the counter said. What was your order? Beef and broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, and egg drop soup. Understanding dawned on Michaela as she stared into the bag in her hands. Excuse me, she said, stepping forward. The man turned and looked at her. His eyebrows rose in surprise. I think we swapped orders. I have your food. Oh, the man said. He still looked unhappy. Now they're probably both cold. He turned to the woman. Can you please remake these orders? Beef and broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, hot and sour soup. And, he motioned to Michaela. Oh, I can just take that one. She pointed to the bag he had placed on the counter. Dot. He held up a hand. No, no. It should be hot, and I've already opened it. You should have a new one. Michaela opened her mouth to say something else, but she didn't want to argue. She snapped her mouth closed and nodded. The woman at the counter said it would be just a few minutes. The man stepped to the side and put his hands on the little girl's shoulders as he pulled her in front of him. Michaela smiled at the girl. She wanted to smile at him too, but he seemed in a hurry to get out. He tapped his foot as they waited. 
I'm sorry about the mix-up, Michaela said. It's not your fault. True. Mistakes do happen. He raised his eyebrows as if he thought they shouldn't. He stared off before he said, efficiency and proper delivery are important for a business. Michaela raised her eyebrows at him. She nodded slowly. Yes, but kindness and grace are important for everyone. His eyes flicked to her, and he stared for a moment, before a smile crept over his face. Yes, you're right. When he smiled and showed an ounce of kindness, Michaela felt her heart skip a beat. What was that fluttering feeling in her stomach as they locked eyes? I guess we can overlook one mistake. It is our favorite Chinese place, after all, he said. Michaela nodded and wanted to say it was hers too. But the woman reappeared with two bags of food and placed them on the counter. The man picked up the bigger bag and inspected the contents. Thanks, he said. He took the little girl's hand and walked out the door. Michaela watched him go before turning to pick up her food. She sighed as she lifted the lid to confirm that her chicken was inside, then thanked the woman. All the way home, she couldn't stop thinking about the man's smile and his deep blue eyes. Later, when her sesame chicken was gone, she broke open the fortune cookie. Even though she didn't put any stock in fortunes, it was always a fun joke to read the words. She stopped and stared at the words when she read, You will soon meet someone new. Chapter 3 Ryan straightened his tie as he called out, Nora, are you ready to go? Nora appeared at the door, and he looked her over. Oh, you look wonderful, sweetheart. He wasn't great at shopping, but together they had found a special dress for the open house. Nora had been quiet most of the shopping trip, but when she saw the pink dress with the bow in the front, she had lit up and pointed. That one, she said. Ryan nodded. That one. He had helped her pick out black dress shoes. They would be practical to wear with other dresses too. Now that he saw her in the dress, he knew they had made the right decision. This little girl deserved to look and feel special. He smiled at Nora, but inwardly he only felt defeated that he couldn't give her all the things she deserved. Dot. Ready to go, he asked. Nora's head bobbed up and down as she bounced on her tiptoes. All right then, let's go. He reached for her hand as they left the house. Nora seemed to hold on for dear life as they walked into the school building. Ryan squeezed back to reassure her. They had talked for a month about the new school, but he still knew tonight would be a challenge. Dozens of children walked through the halls with their parents, some held on, like Nora, others laughed and talked as they made their way to their classrooms. Ryan had received a letter with Nora's classroom assignment two weeks ago. He had held his breath as he peeled back the envelope with the Heritage Christian Academy logo on the front. He didn't know why, since he didn't know any of the teachers personally. So he didn't have any hopes for the name that would appear inside. Still, it felt like a significant event. Nora had attended preschool and kindergarten at their church, so this was a new experience for both of them. Now, as they entered the first grade class, he tried to appear calm for Nora's sake but his heart threatened to pound out of his chest. Was this the right decision? Would she excel in the school? And would she make any friends? Several children were already in the room with their parents. Ryan glanced around the room, decorated in too many colors to count. At the back of the room was the teacher's desk, and he took two steps toward it before the woman looked up. Oh. He stopped where he stood. Hi. The woman met his eyes when she looked up. Hello, she said brightly. Ryan tilted his head and pointed at her. Sesame chicken. She laughed and pointed back at him. Beef and broccoli. That's right. I'm Miss Wilkes. She reached out her hand, and he shook it. Then she turned her attention to his daughter. I'm Miss Wilkes, she repeated. What's your name? Nora tucked her head in Ryan's arm. He gently pushed her back and got on her level to look her in the eye. Remember what we talked about? The little girl nodded, then turned to the teacher. Nora, she said. Hi, Nora, it's so nice to meet you. I'm going to be your teacher this year. 
Nora nodded and stepped back, almost behind Ryan this time, but kept her face visible. We're going to have lots of fun this year and learn a lot too. Is this your first year at Heritage? Or did you go to kindergarten here? Nora shook her head. Miss Wilkes waited and then looked to Ryan for help. It's our first year, he said. Miss Wilkes nodded. We're very glad to have you here. Can I show you your seat? Nora nodded. Great. Miss Wilkes held out her hand. Nora looked at it, then at her face and slowly read out to take her hand. Ryan watched as the two made their way to one of the little round tables. The chair seemed tiny, and at the same time, much too big for his baby girl. How did it seem like just a few weeks ago that they brought her home from the hospital? Or that she was learning to walk and talk? Where did that time go? He sighed, knowing he had missed a lot of those firsts. Her daycare teachers had seen her first steps and heard her first words. But what else was he supposed to do as a single parent? He reminded himself that he was doing the best he could, and that was all anybody could ask of him. Especially after what he'd been through. Nora took a seat in her chair and began working on a coloring sheet. She turned around to flash him a smile. He breathed a sigh of relief. This was going to work. She would be all right. She said she likes coloring, Miss Wilkes said as she came back to her desk. Nora said that? Ryan's eyes grew wide. Miss Wilkes's smile dropped a bit. Well, actually I asked if she liked coloring and she nodded. Ryan furrowed his eyebrows. She's very quiet. I'm hoping this will be a good experience for her. She smiled. I'm sure she'll do fine. Some kids take a little longer to adjust, but they usually end up enjoying it. She paused and bit her lip. Is there anything I should know about? Ryan met her gaze and paused. She doesn't have delays, if that's what you mean. Miss Wilkes shook her head. No, no, I didn't mean that. She can talk. She just doesn't like to. She keeps mostly to herself. But I would like to see her make some friends. I would like to see that too. Mr. Baker, I want you to know, your daughter is in my class, but I see us working as a team. I have her for a few hours during the day, but you have her for the rest of her life. So if there's anything you think I need to know to help her in class, I'm always here to help. Ryan gave a curt nod. He was doing just fine on his own. He needed Nora to learn her school subjects and hopefully make some friends. But he wasn't looking for a partner in raising his child. He had tried that before, and it didn't work out. Thanks, he managed to say. I'm sure it will be a great year for Nora. Yes, sir. She folded her hands in front of her and leaned back on her desk. You're welcome to look around the room and let me know if you have any questions. We'll have a short talk once all the students and parents have arrived. Ryan nodded again and went to Nora's side. He crouched down to watch as she colored, but he didn't say anything for a few minutes. Nora carefully chose each color and stayed inside the lines. She had always been meticulous with things she cared about. When she was finished, she held up the drawing. That's beautiful, sweetheart, Ryan said. Thanks, Daddy. She hugged him. Do I have to go to school here? She whispered as she clung to him. Pain shot through his chest. He cleared his throat to push down the emotion. I wouldn't think of it as you have to, but that you get to. Did you see all the books on those shelves? You're going to read and play, and I bet you'll learn so much you'll be smarter than me by Christmas. Nora giggled as she pushed back and looked at him. No, Daddy, you're the smartest person in the whole world. Ryan grinned. He wished that were true, but at least his daughter believed it. Nora sighed. I wish I could go back to my old school. I know, but this year will be a new adventure. And by the end of the year, I bet you'll be so glad we started a new school. I wish I could just stay with you. I know, sweetie, but I have to go to work, and you have to go to school. He shrugged. That's just the way things work. 
Nora looked like she wanted to argue, but she took a deep breath and nodded. Ryan gave her a quick hug. It's going to be great. Don't worry. Just then Miss Wilkes clapped her hands together. Hi everyone, if you can all gather around for a minute, we have just a few things to go over. Around the room, parents shushed kids and listened to Miss Wilkes. When everyone was quiet, she continued. Welcome, everyone, to our open house. I think I've met everyone, but just as a reminder, I'm Miss Wilkes, and I'm thrilled to have you as part of my first grade class this year. Now, I mean all of you. Because parents, you're a part of our class too. You may not be in the classroom with us every day, but at Heritage, our students' families are a part of our family. Let me talk to the students first. For several minutes, she went over classroom procedures and what they should do when they come into class. She said she would remind them of all the rules the first week of school. Ryan found himself drawn in as she spoke. She dropped her gaze and looked at each of the children in the eyes. He couldn't help but notice how engaged the kids seemed. It was obvious that she loved her job and that she was very good at it. He was so engrossed in watching her facial expressions that it startled him when she stood straight up and looked at him. Now, parents, it's time for me to talk to you. You have some responsibilities in our class too. One thing we will be learning this year is about taking care of our work. So each day your child will bring home a folder, and you are responsible for looking over the papers and signing it. This isn't really homework, it's just our way of letting you know what we're doing here, so you can help reinforce at home. It may tell you to practice some math facts, or to ask them what they learned about a certain animal. But your student should bring that sheet back to class each day, so I know that you've got the information. Ryan liked the idea of keeping up with what Nora was doing every week. Yes, this was good. Also, for those of you who are new to Heritage this year, I hope you've had a chance to look over your school handbook. All Heritage parents are encouraged to volunteer in the classroom at least once a year, and at least one parent from each family is required to help with one school event during the year. So please look over the event list and decide which one you would like to help with. There are sign-up lists on the school website. Ryan must have missed that part of the handbook. Volunteer for an event? He didn't have time for that. He had a business to run, and a child to take care of, and apparently a form to sign every night. Maybe he could get out of that with the single parent thing. I think that's about it. Please let me know if you have questions or concerns. My email is in your class information packet and I check that frequently, so feel free to get in touch with me if you ever need me. The room filled with noise as parents began talking again and kids wiggled in their seats. Some of them seemed intent on staying and visiting in the room a while, but Nora quickly made her way to Ryan and pulled on his arm. Can we go home now? Ryan nodded. We can. Movie and popcorn night, remember? I remember. Do you want to say goodbye to your teacher? He saw some of the other students posing with Miss Wilkes as their parents snapped pictures on their phones. Nora shook her head. Ryan thought another parent might make her do it. But she had done enough today, and he had to admit, he was ready to get out of here too. Just remember, you'll be back on Monday. You'll be ready by then, right? Nora dropped her eyes as a sad look washed over her face. She nodded. Ryan took her hand and whispered a prayer that first grade would be a good experience for her. And that Miss Wilkes would be just what Nora needed. Chapter 4 Michaela settled on her couch with a giant bowl of popcorn. Thoughts of her students and their families swirled in her mind. Every school year was different and every group of students was different, but she loved the start of the school year and all the excitement it brought with it. Maybe that was because the rest of her year wasn't very exciting at all. She sprinkled in the bag of MNMS before reaching for the TV remote. Just as she was ready to push play on the movie, her phone rang. Hey, Claire. Michaela didn't need to look at the name to know who was calling. Hey, I'm sorry I didn't get to see you after open house. One of the moms kept me talking about her son for almost an hour. Whoa. What about? Michaela asked, popping a piece of chocolate in her mouth thought. 
oh, about how wonderful he is, and how he probably needs to go ahead and skip to fourth grade. Michaela let out a laugh, despite herself. You know parents are supposed to think their kids are the best. Yeah, I guess so. So how was your class? Claire asked. Great. It's going to be the best year. You say that every year. Claire laughed. Michaela smiled, even though she could practically hear Claire rolling her eyes. I guess I do, but I feel that way. I know you do, Mac, you're the most positive person I know. Michaela squeezed her eyes shut. She wished that was always true. There had been a time in her life when she whined and complained about her situation, and she still spent days feeling sorry for herself. But it was important to her to keep moving forward the best way she knew how. God had a plan for her, and she would keep telling herself that. I don't know about that, but I like to think the best of things. Any students you're already concerned about, asked Claire. Dot. Michaela furrowed her eyebrows. There is one little girl. Oh. Remember when I told you about the guy that got my Chinese food last week? Michaela couldn't forget it. Not how quiet and shy Nora looked, and not Mr. Baker's eyes when he smiled at her. Her heart skipped a beat at the thought. Yeah. Claire's tone didn't echo Michaela's interest. Dot. His daughter is in my class. Nora. Whoa, that's a weird coincidence. Michaela shrugged. Not that weird. It is a small town. True. But his daughter seems really shy. I think she said one word to me, and that was her name. Michaela couldn't help worrying about the girl. Ah. I'm sure she'll get used to things. Maybe she'll open up then, Claire said. I hope so. But I can't stop thinking about her tonight. Maybe you should pray for her, Claire suggested. Michaela nodded. I know, you're right. She would pray for all her students, but there was something about this one. Michaela felt drawn to her and knew she would say an extra prayer for Nora. What about the mom? Michaela bit her lip. I don't know. It was just the dad at open house. I could ask the office if her mom is listed on her information. But the dad didn't offer any explanation tonight. Did you ask? No, Michaela didn't like to pry, especially when it came to a student's family life. If she needed to know, she would dot. It's easy to ask, will her mom be here later? What if the answer is no? Then you find out the details. Michaela laughed. No, that's what you would do. If he wanted me to know about Nora's mom, he could have told me. Or maybe Nora will tell me once she starts talking. Maybe. Claire paused for a long moment. Well, I just wanted to check in with you. I'm sure you're all ready to watch a movie, so I'll let you go. Thanks, Claire. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Night. Michaela reached for the remote again but paused before starting the movie. Was she that predictable to her friend? Or was boring a better word? It was Friday night, so what else would she do but settle in and watch a movie? A familiar feeling fluttered inside as she wished someone was there to enjoy it with her. She pushed that thought aside. At least she could pick out her own movie, and she didn't have to share her chocolate and popcorn. Yes, this was just fine. And even if it wasn't, it was her life now, and she was used to it. Later, when the credits rolled and her popcorn bowl was empty, Michaela straightened up the living room and started the dishwasher. The place was perfectly neat. Not because she was a clean freak, it was just simple to pick up after herself since she lived alone. As she lay in bed, she stared up at the ceiling in the dark and prayed out loud. God, thank you for the wonderful job you've given me. Without you, I never would have moved to Twin Creeks, and I certainly wouldn't have gotten a job at this small-town Christian school. But I love it and I'm so happy here. Lord, thank you for this new class of first graders. I pray you would bless our year as we learn together. She squeezed her eyes shut, picturing the face of a certain little girl. And Lord, I pray for Nora. I pray you would help her open up and let me in. 
I pray you would show me how to help her, and I pray that first grade would be her best year ever. Michaela drifted off to sleep with a smile on her face. Her last thought was trying to convince herself to focus on her students, and not the mysterious gaze of the father of the student she was praying for. Chapter 5 Ryan squinted at the computer screen in front of him. Those numbers couldn't be right. He flipped through the pages of the report on the desk and made a few notes on his legal pad. He would discuss those with the company owner in their meeting that afternoon. Ryan had always known he wanted to get a degree in business, but he was never sure what he wanted to do with it. From the time he was 12, he had hundreds of business ideas. He had begged his parents to let him start his first company, and he sold candy bars to all the kids in his neighborhood that summer. The business bug bit hard, and his imagination constantly ran wild with new ideas. Once he had his degree, Ryan tried to find the one idea that he wanted to pursue. The harder he tried the worse he felt. Looking for the perfect project stifled his creativity, and he knew he needed to keep his options open. Becoming a management consultant gave him the opportunity to work with different companies and kept him from being bored with one type of business. As he stared at the screen, he knew he could help this business, and that made him proud. This was what he was good at. He could walk into a company on Monday, and on Friday he could leave knowing he had impacted the business. Whether it was financial advice, marketing strategy, human resource development, or management training, Ryan was thrilled to step up to the task. A knock on the door caused him to look up. How's it going? Cole Sanford, one of the business partners, walked in and took a seat at the conference table. Pretty good. I'm making some notes to discuss in our meeting. Great. Cole leaned back and linked his fingers behind his head. I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm dying to know, is it good or bad? Ryan grinned. That's what business owners always wanted to know, but the truth is it was never that simple. He tapped his pencil on the pad. I have some notes, but I have to say, overall I'm really impressed with what you guys have done. Cole clapped his hands together. I knew it. He stood as he cleared his throat. I mean thanks. Of course, we're open to any suggestions. We don't just want to do well, we want to do the best. Which is exactly why you hired me, Ryan said. Dot. Right. I don't know if Jackson explained, but this isn't our first business. We didn't do so well when we worked in Atlanta. So now that we're set up here, we want to make sure we are doing things right. That's what I like to hear. It's easy to rock along for while thinking things are great, when something small is causing problems you don't know you have. Kind of like a leaky pipe in the basement. It doesn't seem that bad until it's really, really bad. I agree. We want zero leaking pipes. Exactly. Especially with important plans coming up, right? Didn't I hear that you're getting married soon? That's right. Three months from tomorrow actually. Congratulations. Thanks, man. You know, I thought for a long time that I would never get married. But now I can't imagine my life any other way. Ryan nodded but dropped his gaze to the table. Cole wrapped his knuckles on the table. I'll let you get back to it. See you later. See ya, Ryan repeated. He sighed as Cole left the room. That guy had a permanent smile plastered on his face. Maybe it was because things were going well with the business. But Ryan had a suspicion it had more to do with the upcoming wedding date. Ryan could remember what that felt like. The excitement and anticipation. The wedding showers and plans. And then the actual day. His own wedding had been perfect. Or at least, it was to him. After all, he was marrying his college sweetheart. They had been planning to get married since their junior year. Ryan's face clouded as he remembered the first couple of months of marriage. It had been exciting and fun. He and Tiffany had shared everything, and he felt sure that they were living their own happily ever after. That was all until he came home one day and found his new wife crying in the bathroom. Honey, what's wrong? He had rushed to her side. She sobbed as she pointed to the counter. 
There was the stick with the life-changing words displayed on the screen, pregnant. Ryan's heart leapt. Honey, this is amazing. He grabbed her into his arms and kissed her. Surely those were happy tears streaming down her face. They had always planned to have a family, and he couldn't be more excited. I'm not ready, she wailed. Ryan's heart plummeted into his stomach. She wasn't happy. You'll be a great mom, he said. I know it's sooner than we thought, but we'll make it work together. I wanted to enjoy my career. I'm just starting out and I want to move up with the company. I want to travel and see the world. I haven't even been anywhere yet, and now my life is over. Over? Ryan tried to keep his voice calm, but it was difficult. It's not over. Being parents is an adventure. But I want to have other adventures. Ryan felt the color drain from his face. What are you saying? Surely she didn't mean she didn't want to keep it. I'm just not ready. I wanted to have a few years first. He tilted her chin up with his finger crooked under it. It will be all right. I'll help and we'll make it work. We can still have adventures. Now in this strange conference room, he felt as if a dark cloud had settled over the table. He had tried hard to make it work. The day Nora was born was the best day of his life. He just knew that Tiffany would be happy now. But things got worse. Tiffany settled into a depression that he couldn't help her out of. He would offer to stay home with the baby so she could go out with her friends, and that seemed to help. But then she wanted to do it more and more often. Ryan often wondered if he should have seen it coming. But he didn't. She seemed happier when she would come home from a night out. He would be covered in spit-up and exhausted from the baby being awake. But he would do it for her. When she didn't want to go on the trip with him and Nora, maybe he should have stayed home. He wanted to give her the space she needed. He didn't know she would decide she wanted that space forever. Ryan squeezed his eyes shut and tried to push the thoughts away. Tiffany had made her decision. But he had made his too. He would be the best dad he could to Nora. She deserved two parents who loved her, but if she only got one, he would be the best. He turned his attention to the numbers on the screen. Part of being the best parent for Nora was doing his job to provide for her. And at exactly three o'clock, he planned to be waiting for her outside school to hear about her first day. Chapter 6 Michaela watched as the clock ticked down. The day had flown by, just like most first days of school. Her students had been angels. They listened attentively as she reminded them of their room procedures for the morning. She beamed as she read them her traditional first day of school book, School's First Day of School. She paid special attention to Nora and was pleased to see her smile as Michaela read the story. Michaela didn't want to play favorites, but that wasn't what this was about. It was about giving attention to a student who needed a little help to come out of their shell. Nora was polite and respectful. She would answer questions when called on, even if she did so barely above a whisper. It broke her heart when Michaela watched as the class walked onto the playground for recess and Nora wandered to the bench by herself. She sighed as she noted that she sat there the entire recess. Michaela knew she wasn't the friend she needed. But maybe she could help by pairing her up in class with one of the more outgoing girls. But today wasn't the day for that. Classroom etiquette was their focus this week. It was always challenging for first graders to get used to their new routine. Especially after a summer of playing. They would find their groove, but until then, Michaela needed to keep a close watch. At 2.50, Michaela picked up the bell from her desk. It was a gift from her grandmother who had been an elementary school teacher for 20 years. Michaela gently shook it, and the happy twinkling sound caused her students to look up from their handwriting page. Everyone, it's almost time to go home. I need you to put away your work quickly and quietly. Then get your backpacks and line up at the door, please. She stood back and watched as some of the students immediately cleared their space. Others needed a reminder, and she walked around the room, tapping students on the shoulder to help them along. 
still, it was only a few minutes before they were lined up and ready for the final bell of the day. Now everyone remember, when we go out the door, bus riders to the right and car riders to the left. We walk quickly and quietly. No pushing or running. Got it? Got it, a few of the students replied. I didn't hear everyone. Got it? She repeated. Got it. The group said back in unison. Great job. She held both hands in the air with a thumbs up. We had a great first day, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. With that, the bell rang and Michaela pulled open the classroom door. Bye, she called out to each student as they exited. She waited until they had all left before stepping into the hall to watch them go. She noticed Nora at the end of the line, slowly walking toward the car rider line as she stared at the floor. Her heart ached to pull a few words out of the girl. What would she say if she opened up to her? Was she lonely or sad? Or did she really just want to be left alone? Michaela knew she would spend more time praying. For now, she walked back into her classroom and made her way around the room. She straightened up some books on the shelf, picked up a stray pencil or two. Then she walked around the room and touched each of the students' nameplates on the tables. She prayed for each one and thanked the Lord for making them part of her class this year. And part of the family of her heart forever. Asterisk 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 Ryan couldn't believe how much Nora had talked on the way home. She had told him about the book Miss Wilkes read to them, about the girl who had the same backpack as her, and about the math problems they did on the whiteboard. He couldn't help but notice that she didn't mention talking to or playing with anyone. Did you make any new friends? he asked. Nora grew quiet and shook her head. That's all right, he assured her. You have the whole year. Did you play during recess? Not really. Nora shrugged. I didn't feel like playing. Oh. Why not? I don't know. Ryan kept a smile on his face. The last thing he wanted was for her to think he was disappointed in her. Maybe you'll feel like playing tomorrow. Are there monkey bars? Nora nodded dot. You love monkey bars. Maybe you can try that. What about a four-square space? Nora nodded again. With a ball too. Were there kids playing four-square? Yes. Maybe tomorrow you could ask to play too. Maybe, Nora said. Ryan decided that was enough pushing. What do you think about breakfast for dinner? Yay! Nora held both fists up in the air as she cheered. With biscuits and bacon? Of course. Ryan smiled as Nora did a happy dance in the back seat. She pulled out a notebook and started drawing. He let her alone for the rest of the drive home. He knew there was a happy, fun personality in his child that most people never got to see. If only he knew how to draw it out and help her be comfortable around someone besides him. After they ate biscuits, eggs, and bacon for dinner, Nora helped load the dishes into the dishwasher. Then, before he could even ask, she brought her folder with her school papers to him. Oh right, I almost forgot. We can't forget, Daddy, we have to do it every day. Remember? I remember. But if I forget, you remind me. And if I forget, you remind me. That's right. That's what I call teamwork. And we're a team, aren't we, Daddy? You bet, sweetheart. Nora wrapped her arms around him and kissed his cheek. Emotion filled his voice as he spoke. I'll look this over and sign it. Okay? Okay, Daddy. Nora skipped off to her room. He watched her go and whispered a prayer of thanks. Thanks for the gift that was Nora, and for the gift of a wonderful first day of school. Chapter 7 The first two weeks of school had flown by for Michaela. Her students had been good, but the beginning of the year was all about getting to know each other and setting up class expectations. It was Friday afternoon, and she had just sent her class out the door for the weekend. She felt like they were just settling in, and now there would be two days off, and on Monday they would drag in and forget to hang up their backpacks. 
still, she laughed at the thought. They would get it eventually. She made her way to her desk and sat with her notebook. Turning to a page with a list of her students, she made notes about the week. With twenty kids in her class, it was impossible to remember everything about everyone, but she liked to make notes of the significant things and keep track of their progress. She talked to herself as she wrote. Kylie read a level one reader by herself this week. Jameson worked really hard on his handwriting. Porter was excited about the community project. She paused and stared at the next name on her list for several moments. Nora, she whispered. Two weeks and she still hadn't managed to get the girl to say more than direct answers in class. And even then, they were one or two word answers. Lord, I don't know how to help her. She is a sweet girl, and she doesn't cause problems. In fact, she follows instructions and pays attention better than anyone. She needs a friend. She looked again over the list of her students and flipped back over the notes from the past two weeks. One name stood out. Josie helped a classmate. Josie shared a story about her weekend, the entire class enjoyed it. Josie is outgoing and friendly. Michaela tried to think if she had seen Josie make friends with anyone in particular. But unlike Nora, who usually sat alone, Josie flitted between different classmates as if she was trying to find her place. Lord, could they be a good pair? Michaela closed her eyes and tried to imagine it. Yes. This could work. She began scribbling notes for her lesson plans for Monday. That would be the day she would assign reading buddies. She would hope and pray that Nora and Josie would be the right pair. Her thoughts drifted away from the two girls, and she wondered for the umpteenth time about Nora's mother. Since it seemed unlikely that Nora would tell her, and Nora's father didn't seem to want to share, Michaela had approached the administrator to ask if her mother was listed on the file. We don't have her mother's name, had been the answer. You know we interview all families for admission, and we did ask about Nora's mother. He told us her mother is gone. But that's all the information we have. We didn't pressure him beyond that. Now, once again, Michaela wondered what gone meant. Did she pass away? Did he leave her? Surely a mother didn't just leave a husband and child. Michaela waved a hand in the air to wipe away the thoughts. It wasn't her business, well, maybe it was, since Nora was in her class. Nevertheless, this wasn't the time to be thinking about it. Not when she needed to reset her classroom and get out of here for the weekend. No matter that the weekend would only consist of chores, errands, and getting ready to come back to school on Monday. Sunday morning arrived with the promise of a perfect fall day. The leaves were beginning to change, and the southern summer temperatures were finally tapering off. Michaela sipped her coffee as she got ready for church. Her long curly hair hung around her shoulders as she pulled on a black dress and a dark green cardigan. As she looked in the mirror, she frowned. You look like a schoolteacher, she said. Then she let out a laugh. Maybe she had gotten a little stuck in her ways. It might be time to freshen up her wardrobe. Dot. Coffee in hand, she grabbed her Bible and keys and headed out the door. She took a deep breath of brisk air and smiled. Thank you, Lord. I have a feeling today is going to be a good day. Her drive to church was uneventful and she enjoyed the scenery. Fall was easily her favorite season, and Twin Creeks did it right. In a matter of weeks, all the trees would be glorious reds and yellows. Michaela wished they would last forever. She drove through the main part of town, admiring the little shops that had been owned by the same families for years. That was part of the charm of moving here. Growing up in a small town had been wonderful, and she always thought she would stay there and raise her own family. Her eyes darkened remembering the downside of small-town life, when everyone knows that your boyfriend went away to college and found someone else. Moving away seemed to be the only way to get away from the looks of pity and the people trying to set her up with someone new. She didn't want the first, and she wasn't ready for the second. Twin Creeks had been a fresh start. But while she loved the town dearly and had come to think of it as home, a first-grade teacher in a small private school doesn't find much opportunity for meeting eligible bachelors. 
and Michaela had found that pickings were slim for small-town bachelors over the age of 25. Her mother had begged her many times to move back home, but she knew she would stay in Twin Creeks. Praying about it only made her more certain that this was where God wanted her to be. Her heart warmed as she made her way into church. There were a couple of churches in town, but she had known this was the one for her the first Sunday she walked through the doors. She still felt that way every Sunday. Emily and Ally had saved a seat for her in their Sunday school classroom. Michaela had gotten used to being sandwiched in between the two couples since her friends had their husband and fiancé with them. She knew the two women went to extra lengths to make her feel included, and she was grateful. Still, she wished she didn't always have to be the fifth wheel. Opening her Bible, Michaela reminded herself to focus on the lesson. After Sunday school, she made her way out of the class and down the hallway. Emily and Ally hung back with the guys. Hey. Claire greeted her with a hug as soon as she walked into the church foyer. Her voice echoed to the ceiling with exposed wood beams. The two friends linked arms as they picked up a bulletin from the table and made their way into the sanctuary. Michaela loved the traditional feel of the long wooden pews and the stained glass windows. The women moved to the front to take their seats. You're not going to believe what happened last night, Claire said as they Saturday, what? Michaela gave her full attention as she waited to hear the news. Dot. I had to wait to tell you in person. Claire paused and pressed her lips together in a grin before she burst out. Brad called me. Michaela's eyes grew wide. Really? Yes. And? We talked for a while, and he asked if I would like to have dinner with him next week, Claire squealed. Michaela held back her own squeal. I can't believe it. I told you, you wouldn't believe me. That's so exciting. I can't wait to hear all about it. I know, right? I've only been hinting for a year. Michaela laughed. Or longer. True. Who would have thought when you knocked him into the pool at that barbecue that he would ask you out? Claire put a hand to her forehead. Don't remind me. I've never been such a klutz. Michaela tilted her head and gave her wide-eyed look. Okay, okay, maybe I have. But I've never been so embarrassed by it. He wasn't exactly planning to swim. Oh, you mean with his clothes and shoes on, and his phone and keys in his pockets? Right. Claire's face reddened. But hey, now he's taking you to dinner. Maybe it's a story you'll tell your kids someday. Claire sighed and folded her hands together as if she was praying. I hope so. Michaela gave her friend a quick hug and grinned as the music began. She turned her attention to the front and tried to focus on the words of the hymn. She was thrilled for Claire, really, she was. But it was hard not to wonder if it would ever be her turn. Lord, she prayed silently. If there is someone out there for me, I pray you would bring him soon. I would really like to meet him. She closed her eyes and stood perfectly still. For a moment everything around her disappeared. Even the music and voices of the congregation grew faint as four words echoed in her heart. Today is the day. Ryan held onto Nora's hand as they walked into the unfamiliar church. He wasn't at all concerned that she would let go, but he needed her as much as she needed him. He was a pro at walking into a new business every week and launching in, but this was different. He glanced around the sanctuary, wondering if this was a good idea. After four years at their current church he still didn't feel plugged in or involved. They went on Sunday, and Nora sat quietly in her Sunday school class, but Ryan wanted something more. More like the church he had grown up in where people were friendly and welcoming and families did life together. Even though he was unsure how a single dad with a six-year-old daughter fit into that community, it was time to try. As they found seats in the middle of the room on one of the long, wooden pews, it reminded of his church growing up. Back then they would pull a hymnal from a pocket in the back of the pew and find the number of the song to follow along as they sang. Now he could see the words would be projected on a screen up front, but this church held touches of the old, traditional church he knew. He flipped over the bulletin he had picked up on the way in and saw the offerings of activities listed. 
It looked like they had a children's program and adult classes as well. He didn't plan to jump into those today, but maybe if they came back, they would try it. Something about the place felt familiar and welcoming. He didn't want to get ahead of himself, but he felt like it was likely they would come back. The music started, and he joined in singing with the congregation. Nora grasped his hand the whole time, but he could hear her singing quietly. They settled in for the sermon, and he looped his arm on the back of the pew behind Nora. She scooted even closer as he opened his Bible and laid it on his lap. When the service was over, Ryan stood, turning to walk towards the doors, but Nora pulled on his arm and pointed up front. He followed where she pointed, and his gaze landed on Miss Wilkes. Oh, he said, there's your teacher. Why did his heart fall into a funny rhythm when he saw her? Nora pumped her head up and down. Do you want to go say hi? Ryan fully expected her to say no, but she only paused slightly before she said, yeah. His eyebrows shot up. He didn't want to waste the moment, so he took her hand and made his way through the people exiting the sanctuary. He didn't stop to think about how awkward it might be for him until he was standing in front of her. Um, hi, he said, causing her to turn from the woman she was talking to Dot. Her eyes grew wide. Hi, she said. She locked eyes with him, and a strange look came over her face. He couldn't be sure, but it looked like a mix of surprise, excitement, and terror. She shook her head ever so slightly and blinked a few times before she looked at his daughter. Hi, Nora. She reached for the little girl, and Nora surprised Ryan again by going to her for a hug. How are you? Miss Wilkes said, dropping to Nora's eye level. Good, Nora said. Do you usually go to church here? Nora answered with a shake of her head dot. Oh, well I'm glad you came today. I'm so happy to see you. Miss Wilkes looked back at Ryan. Suddenly he felt the need to explain. He didn't want her to think they'd never been to church. We do usually go to church. Just not this church. I've been feeling for a while now like we needed to try something new. He shrugged. I guess today is the day. Miss Wilkes locked eyes with him at that phrase. Was it his imagination or did she gasp? Her hand went to her mouth and she seemed at a loss for words. I guess we should be going. It was nice to see you. Yes, you too, she said, clearing her throat. And you too, Nora. I hope you'll come back to our church again. And I'll see you in the morning at school. I can't wait. Me either, Nora said. Dot. Ryan had to peel himself away. His heart soared as he heard his daughter say those words. A wide smile spread across his face, and he beamed as he waved goodbye to Miss Wilkes. Chapter 8 Michaela sipped coffee Monday morning at her kitchen counter. She hadn't stopped thinking about Nora's dad since Sunday. She let her face fall into her hand, remembering that she only knew him as Nora's dad or Mr. Baker. How could she be thinking about him? Had God really sent him to say hello to her at church? This couldn't really be the answer to her prayer, could it? He's the dad of my student, she said out loud, embarrassed that she said the words, even though no one could hear her. She set down her coffee cup, feeling too wound up to drink any more. Getting ready and leaving for school was the best option right now. Even if she would be early. Michaela told herself to act normal as she entered her classroom. Just as she was setting down her bag and dropped into her desk chair, her phone rang. Surprised to see the school number on the screen, she picked it up. Hello? Hi, Miss Wilkes, this is Mrs. Holloway. Oh, hi. Michaela furrowed her eyebrows. Why was the school administrator calling her before school? We have a little situation and I need your help. Of course, what can I do? We haven't had as many parent volunteers as we need for the fall carnival. We need at least three more parents, so I'm calling the teachers of some parents who haven't signed up for an event yet. Oh, I see. One of your classroom parents hasn't signed up, so I was hoping you could call and ask him to volunteer for the carnival. Oh, sure, I'll be happy to. Perfect. It's Ryan Baker, Nora Baker's dad. 
Michaela almost dropped the phone. Mr. Baker? Yes, that's right. So just let me know what he says. Um, okay. Thank you, Miss Wilkes. Have a nice day. Michaela pulled the phone away from her ear and stared at the screen for a few moments. She knew what she needed to do, but she didn't want to. A few days ago, Ryan Baker was just her student's dad. Of course she had known he was attractive from the first time she saw him at the Chinese restaurant, but she had never allowed herself to think anything more about it. But after that moment at church, she didn't know if she could even look at him, much less talk to him in a normal tone of voice. Slowly, she pulled her laptop out of her bag and sat it on the desk. Everything moved in slow motion as she opened it and navigated to her class contact list. There was his number on the screen. Maybe she could just email him. That would be easier. She sighed. Mrs. Holloway needed an answer soon, and he was more likely to say yes if she had him on the phone. She could feel her heartbeat in her fingertips as she typed the number into her phone and waited while it rang. Ryan Baker, he answered. Hi, Mr. Baker, this is Miss Wilkes. There was a slight pause before she heard him clear his throat. Hi, Miss Wilkes, is everything all right? Oh, yes. Everything's fine. I just have a favor to ask. I mean, not a favor for me, it's for the school. Mrs. Holloway asked me to call. Michaela pressed her hand to her forehead, hearing herself babble. It's about volunteering for a school event. Oh, right. I haven't signed up yet. I've been really busy, and it's hard to fit something like that in as a single parent. Parent. He was a parent. Of one of her students, Michaela reminded herself. Yes, I understand. A lot of parents have already signed up for their event this year, but we actually need a few more people for the fall carnival. Oh. Ryan did not sound excited. I was wondering if you could fill one of those slots. What will that entail? There are a few meetings as we make plans, then there's setup and helping at the carnival. Mum, Michaela couldn't stop talking. It's a lot of fun though. And it's an important event for the school. It's all about coming together as a community. Oh. Ryan's voice seemed to tick up a notch. Maybe that interested him. Well, all right. I guess I can do that. Great. Michaela flipped open her planner. The first committee meeting is this Thursday at 6. At the school? Yes, sir. In the conference room. I'll be there. Thank you, Mr. Baker. I really appreciate you stepping up to do this. My pleasure. But Miss Wilkes? Yes. Please don't ever call me sir again. Michaela felt a blush creep over her cheeks. Yes, uh, you got it. Ryan's laugh echoed through the phone. Goodbye, Miss Wilkes. Bye, Michaela squeaked out. She hung up and laid her head on top of her arms on her desk. What is wrong with me? She said out loud. What is wrong with you? Claire asked, entering the room. Dot. Nothing, Michaela blurted. I'm fine. Claire moved to the desk and narrowed her eyes. Come on, I know you better than that. What's going on? Michaela felt the sweat on her palms. Really, it's nothing. I just had to call one of my students' parents. Oh, is someone in trouble? No, just needed a phone call. Mim, Claire, gave her a look, but dropped it. Michaela assumed she knew better than to ask questions about what could be a personal issue with a student. We still on for dinner? Huh? Michaela could barely think straight. Dinner. Tonight? We said we would try out the new cafe. Oh, yes, right. Yes, tonight. We're still on. Why couldn't she put a sentence together? Claire gave her a strange look. Okay, I'll see you later then. Michaela took in a deep breath and let it out as Claire left her. She would have to pull herself together. 
Yes, Mr. Baker happened to be at her church on Sunday, and he happened to be the one parent who hadn't already signed up to help. Those things could be a coincidence. God knew she couldn't get involved with a single dad from her classroom. No, that wasn't what was happening here. She needed to focus on the work before her, and the kids who would arrive soon. God, she silently prayed. Keep my imagination from running away with me. Help me to do my job and not think about this anymore. Besides, she told herself, he's just trying to be a good dad. It's not like he agreed to help because of me. Chapter 9 Ryan couldn't believe he agreed to help with a carnival because of his daughter's teacher. Since the day he heard about volunteering, he'd been ready with his excuses. Then she called, and he crumbled at the sound of her voice. Somehow the thought of disappointing her had been his undoing. He couldn't say why. She was only his daughter's teacher, after all. There couldn't be anything more than that between them, could there? Maybe he just wanted to help her out, since Nora seemed to like her. That must be it. Whatever the reason, when Miss Wilkes had called to ask, he couldn't say no. Now, after a crazy day at work, he found himself racing down the hall, toward the conference room. He hated being late. He spent his days telling companies how to be efficient and run properly, and a big part of that was delivering on time. But the babysitter had car trouble and was late to his house. So now he was panicking as he made his way toward the meeting that he didn't want to go to in the first place. He could just imagine a room full of parents and teachers tapping their watches as he walked in. Dot. He rounded the corner to the room and slowed his steps as he looked at the group gathered around the table. About ten people sat around the table, but at the head of the table was a woman he hadn't been able to stop thinking about. Everyone looked up at him. Ryan held up a hand. Hi, I'm Ryan Baker. I'm sorry I'm late. Babysitter problems. Ryan watched the nods of understanding around the table. Hi, Miss Wilkes said. We're just getting started. Have a seat. Thanks. The only seat available was the one next to her. Maybe no one wanted to sit up front next to the teacher. Ryan didn't mind. Miss Wilkes called the meeting to order. First of all, thank you to everyone here for volunteering. The fall carnival is one of our biggest events of the year and we couldn't do it without you. Now, let's get down to business. What's the date of the carnival again? A voice beside Ryan asked. Ryan looked at the man in the flannel shirt and jeans who was scratching his head. Clearly, he had been volunteered by his wife to serve on the committee. It's Friday, October 20th, Miss Wilkes said. She graciously added, it's right here on your handout. Ryan looked to see that everyone had a piece of paper in front of them. Before he could ask, he looked to Miss Wilkes, who was passing him one. Thanks, he said quietly. She nodded. We have a number of things to go over. We have several booths that everyone expects to see. That's the dunking booth, the cakewalk, and the maze. The maze? Ryan asked. When everyone looked at him, he gave a nervous laugh. Sorry, this is my first year. Miss Wilkes smiled. That's all right, maybe I should start at the beginning. She pointed to the sheet. The carnival takes place in the gym. We have booths set up with food and games, and the big attraction is a big hay bale maze right outside. Wow, sounds cool. Maybe this wouldn't be so bad after all. The carnival sounded fun, and it would be a good chance to meet people. Ryan knew if was going to pray for friends, he needed to be willing to be involved. We need volunteers to help set up the booths. There are others outside of the committee who volunteer to help with setup and takedown, and also to run a booth for a time slot. What do we do? asked Plaid Shirt Man. We will finalize all the plans and organize the volunteers. Also, we will do any decorations and man the tables to sell tickets and handle the raffle drawing. A woman in a pink shirt at the other end of the table raised her hand and spoke up. I would like to volunteer to help with the raffle. Thank you. I'll make a note, but we'll get to assigning jobs in just a minute. We have a few other things to decide on first. 
The biggest thing is that we always have one big raffle prize. That's the one that gets everyone really excited about the drawing, so we need to come up with a big ticket item. Any suggestions? What are some things you've done before? Ryan asked. Miss Wilkes tapped her cheek with her index finger. Let's see. One year we did a weekend stay at a resort, another year was an entertainment center with a big screen TV and surround sound, and last year it was VIP tickets to the pro golf tournament. So that gives you an idea. What about tickets and autographed items from a sports team? Ryan asked. Miss Wilkes smiled. Sure, that would be a good idea. Does anyone have connections to a sports team? Ryan held up his hand, and his heart skipped a beat when Miss Wilkes's eyes met his. Her own eyes widened, and he could see the deep brown color even better. You do? Yes. I've done business, consulting for the Titans football team. I'm sure I can wrangle up something for a donation. Maybe even a meet and greet. Really? That would be amazing, Miss Wilkes said. Plaid shirt guy banged a fist on the table. Cool. I would buy a raffle ticket for a chance at an autograph from that quarterback, he said. He shrugged. Sure, I'll make a call tomorrow. Miss Wilkes looked at him, seemingly in disbelief. Ryan hoped it didn't sound like he was bragging, he only wanted to help. I guess we can talk about other small prizes. We like to have local businesses involved, and especially any business with connections to the school. Miss Wilkes looked around the table. The Stevens own a cleaning company, they could donate something. And Lauren Burnett's parents own that party rental place. Don't forget, Travis Wright always donates an equipment rental. Miss Wilkes nodded as she wrote down a list. That's a great start. Any other ideas? When no one spoke, she continued. We'll keep a list, and we can add to it as we come up with more. The meeting continued as they discussed booth ideas and designing the flyer for the event. After a while, Miss Wilkes called everyone's attention back. We've got a great start on this. Our next meeting is scheduled for next Thursday night at the same time. Before then, I would like to assign us all to different areas. I know Susan said she would like to help with the raffle, so I'll put her on that team. Anyone else want to work with the raffle and sell tickets at the event? A blonde woman next to Susan raised her hand. Great, Miss Wilkes said, scribbling on her notes. We also need a few people to oversee the booths, checking signups and making sure they have what they need on the day of the carnival. Any volunteers? Plaid shirt guy raised his hand, and two other women did as well. Miss Wilkes wrote down their names. I guess that leaves decorations, and Jen will set up and clean up. Miss Wilkes looked around the room, comparing her list to the faces in front of her. Her eyes landed on Ryan. Mr. Baker, I think that leaves us. Ryan didn't take his eyes off her as he nodded. Sure, sounds good. Was he crazy, or did he notice a flash of pink across her cheeks? Perfect. She looked away from him quickly. That's enough for tonight. Thank you all for coming and we'll meet back here next Thursday. Everyone began talking, several of the women picked up their purses and made their way out as they talked. Ryan stood, awkwardly picking his phone up and inspecting it with care before slowly placing it in his pocket. Was it weird if he talked to her after the meeting? She cleared her throat. Thanks for volunteering last minute. Oh sure, no problem. And the idea for the raffle items was perfect, thanks for offering to do that. Ryan nodded as he shoved his hands in his pockets. No problem. He wanted to kick himself for just repeating the same thing. Uh, he racked his brain for something to say. How's Nora been in class this week? Miss Wilkes's smile spread wide. Has she told you anything? She's talked more than I've heard her talk in a while. She seems to have hit it off with her reading buddy, Josie. Miss Wilkes beamed. Yes, I thought they might be a good match. Josie's very outgoing, and I think she's pulling Nora out of her shell a little bit. Is she talking more at school? Ryan's heart soared at the thought. 
a little bit more in front of everyone, but I hear her talking to Josie during their partner reading time. Miss Wilkes laughed. Well, sometimes it's Josie doing more of the talking, but Nora answers her. Nora said they'd even been playing on the playground together. I know. Miss Wilkes clapped her hands together, then seemed to realize that other parents were watching. I'm so glad she's found a friend. And Nora seems to help balance Josie too. It's good for both of them. Ryan nodded. That's good. He looked around as the room grew quiet. I guess I'll head out. See you later, Miss Wilkes. Oh, please, it's Michaela. Michaela, Ryan tried out the name. Goosebumps formed on his arms as he realized how much he liked saying it. He almost couldn't move for a moment. Ryan, he finally said that. Ryan, she repeated. See you later. Ryan hurried to his car. Inside, he put his hand on the steering wheel but didn't turn on the engine. Why was his heart pounding and his palms sweating? His voice even sounded off. He wasn't looking for a relationship, and this one was certainly off-limits. So why was she on his mind, and why was he stumbling over his words? He shook himself as he said, Get it together, man. He turned up the music loud enough to drown out any other thoughts and headed home to Nora. Why had she told him to call her Michaela? Sure, other parents called her that, but usually because they knew her outside of school. So why had she told the man she barely knew to call her by her first name? Michaela stood in the now empty conference room. She sank into the chair and pressed her fingertips to her cheeks. Was it hot in here? Or were her cheeks burning for a different reason? Mr. Baker, Ryan, had stolen the show at the meeting. She had expected him to sit quietly and slide through the meeting without making it a stir. Then he had to go and throw out possibly the best raffle prize they'd ever had. She hoped he could really get it, since they didn't discuss any other options. She might be holding her breath until it came through. But what surprised her the most was he didn't dash out of the room the moment she ended the meeting. Was it possible he wanted to talk to her? Michaela squeezed her eyes shut and scolded herself for the thought. Of course he would talk to her. His daughter was in her class. They had her in common. But Nora was her student, and that needed to be her priority. She couldn't be getting confused because he waved a fancy raffle prize and smiled at her from behind those bright blue eyes of his. No, she wouldn't think about that anymore. She stuffed her notes into her bag and closed the door behind her. Chapter 10 What movie did you pick tonight? Claire asked as she walked in the front door. I haven't picked yet, but let's watch something funny. Claire agreed. She plopped down on the couch and reached for the popcorn bowl Michaela had waiting for her. How's that thing with your student? What? Michaela gave her a confused look. You know, the student that you had to talk to the parent about. Michaela's eyes darted back and forth. Oh, right. It's nothing. Everything is fine. Uh-huh. Claire put down the popcorn bowl and took the remote control out of Michaela's hand. Hey. Michaela protested. What's the deal? What do you mean? Claire narrowed her eyes. Since when do you not tell me what's going on? Michaela shrugged. It's nothing really. I don't believe you. Michaela sighed, knowing Claire wouldn't let this go. Fine. It's not really about a student. I mean, kind of. But it's just that I had to talk to her dad. But not about her. Claire raised her eyebrows and waited. Sorry, I'm not following. Well, it's just that. Michaela wrung her hands as she searched for the words. He's actually a, um, single dad. Uh-huh, Claire drug the words out as she narrowed her eyes. And? He's a single dad, and his daughter Nora is in my class. Oh, Nora, the little girl at church, oh. Claire's eyes widened as understanding dawned. He's a hot dad. Michaela buried her face in her hands. Don't say that. 
I can't think about that. Claire only laughed. But he is. And you think so too, don't you? Michaela looked up. She could feel the heat radiating from her face. She did think he was attractive. And after the carnival meeting, she knew how easy it would be to fall for someone like him. It's just that I can't stop thinking about him. And I had to call the other day to ask him to be on the fall carnival committee. And did he say yes? Yes. So now you're on a committee planning an event with Hot Dad? Don't call him that. But yes. And he jumped in to help and made these amazing suggestions and were assigned to the same task for the event. I don't see the problem. The problem? The problem? Michaela's voice rose as she repeated the question. The problem is he's my student's dad. I can't think he's attractive in any way. Claire shrugged. Sure you can. It doesn't have to mean you're going to do something. But he's single, and you're single. There's nothing wrong with thinking he's an attractive man. Michaela shook her head. I can't talk about this. She reached for the remote. Let's just watch a movie and pretend this conversation never happened. He's my student's dad, he's helping with the carnival, it's just like any other parent in my class. End of story. Claire pressed her lips together into a smirk and slowly handed over the remote. Something funny, right? Michaela asked, flipping on the TV. Yep, definitely something funny. Chapter 11 Ryan wasn't sure about this. He wanted to get involved, and if he wanted Nora to make friends, he needed to learn how to do the same. But it had seemed like a better idea before now. Was it too late to back out? Maybe just sit in the hallway and wait while Nora attended the Wednesday night kids program at the new church? No, he had told her she could be brave and go, and so could he. He used to have friends. Lots of friends. He had even been in a fraternity in college. Several of those guys had been in his wedding. But that was before. Before his life fell apart and he became a dad, raising a daughter alone. It didn't help that he had been so young and none of his college buddies had kids yet. None of them could talk to him about naps and diaper changes. He took a deep breath and walked through the doors of the church gym. The echo of basketballs bouncing against the floor filled the room. A couple of men were sitting on the bleachers talking, but more were on the court. Ryan walked towards the bleachers and dropped his gym bag and water bottle. Hey, man, how's it going, one of the men on the bleachers said. Good. He reached out a hand. I'm Ryan Baker. Hey Ryan, I'm Travis. This is Jackson and Cole. Ryan shook hands with both of them as he left. I know Jackson and Cole. Oh. Travis asked. Yep, Cole spoke up. Ryan did some business, consulting for us. Good to see you. Jackson pointed at Travis and said, this is my brother-in-law. Then he pointed to Cole. And he's about to be my brother-in-law. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So business partner and brother-in-law? Ryan said. Jackson held a hand to his chest and let out an exaggerated sigh. Yep. Almost killed me. Or at least our friendship. But we worked it out. It's a little weird when your best friend is marrying your sister. On the other hand, it's pretty awesome. Glad to hear you feel that way, Cole said. Ryan looked between the three men. You all go to church here? Travis nodded. I've been coming here since I was a kid. But we've all been coming to the men's group for a few months now. Ryan nodded. We're new to the church. But I thought tonight sounded fun. Although I'm pretty rusty, I don't know the last time I played basketball. That's all right, Cole said. You'll fit right in with these guys. Yeah right, Jackson said. Pretty sure I beat you every week. PSH, that's fake news, Cole said. Let's just get out there and see for ourselves, Travis suggested. Ryan followed the other three onto the court. 
they joined the men and divided up into teams. Ryan was on Cole and Travis' team. He was being honest when he said he was rusty. But it seemed to come back to him pretty quickly. He was winded but kept up with the guys. When the game ended, they passed high fives around, then headed to grab water bottles. Travis called out. Let's take a seat on the bleachers when we're all settled. It was several minutes while they all got a drink and Jackson and Cole punched each other in the shoulders, arguing about who scored the most points. Travis quieted them down and they all sat in some semblance of a circle on the different levels of the bleachers. Thanks for coming tonight, guys. I'm glad to see that some of you keep coming every week. I appreciate your commitment. And I'm also excited to see some new faces. Playing ball takes up most of our time, but we also like to have some time to catch up on what's going on with everybody and just share if there's anything we need to pray for. I'll go first, Jackson spoke up. In case anybody doesn't know, I'm Jackson. I've got some pretty exciting news tonight. Wanted you all to be the first to know we're expecting. A few of the guys cheered. Of course, when he says first, he means after everyone that Ally insisted they had to tell before us. Cole said dot. Jackson grinned as he nodded. It's true. Ryan liked the way the two bantered back and forth. What was it like to have a friend like that? It had been too long since Ryan had someone to joke with. But you were one of those people, Cole. Travis said. And so were you, Travis. Cole answered back. Yeah, but you know Ally told all the girls first, said Tavis. Nah. You guys are the first. Don't you worry. Jackson winked. Travis laughed, okay, we're all excited for you Jackson and we'll be praying for you and Ally and the baby. Thanks, man, Jackson said. Let's keep going, Travis said. Cole? Dude, you know we've just got wedding stuff going on. It's a lot of lists and plans. I'm sure between Emily and Ally they got things covered, Travis said. You know it, Cole agreed. But weddings are tough on everybody, so we'll keep you in our prayers. Let's see, Travis looked around. Ryan, what about you? Ryan looked up, caught off guard. Oh, I'm good. Anything going on that we can pray for? Travis asked. Ryan shrugged and shook his head. No, nothing right now. He cleared his throat and dropped his gaze to avoid looking at anyone. He'd just met most of these guys. He wasn't about to spill his life story, and that's what it would take to tell them he could use prayers for himself and his daughter. Saying something like that without mentioning a wife was just opening the door for more questions. Gotcha. We're glad you came tonight, and we hope you'll come back next week. Thanks. Ryan nodded. The strange thing was, he already knew he would be back next week, and the week after. Maybe he wasn't ready to share tonight, but he felt like this was the kind of group he could share with someday. Travis continued around the circle and a few more guys asked for prayer for family situations or work, then Travis led them in prayer. Dear God, thank you for every man gathered here tonight. Thank you for a chance to play ball and hang out and fellowship together. And thank you that we can share what's going on in our lives. He prayed for the requests, but Ryan didn't hear any more. He silently prayed that God could make these guys his friends, and that this could be a turning point in his life. God, he prayed inwardly. I don't want to be alone anymore. When Travis said, Amen, Ryan wholeheartedly agreed. Chapter 12 Ryan tapped his fingers on his steering wheel, trying to gather the nerves to climb out. Dot. Daddy, what are we waiting for? Nora. She was the one who could keep him calm and focused on his goal. He had agreed to help with the fall festival for her. This was her school and her opportunity, and that's what he needed to remember. And how long could it take to drag out decorations for the fall festival from the storage closet? Come on, Nora, let's go. Ryan took one final deep breath and blew it out before climbing out of the car. He grasped Nora's hand in his, not sure if it was more for her or him. He definitely needed the buffer today to be in the same space as her teacher. 
her beautiful, kind, single teacher. The back door to the gymnasium was cracked open, so they made their way inside. Michaela had told him that the closet was down the hallway and he would be able to find it easily enough. Dot. He heard noises coming from around the corner and they headed that direction. The open door at the end of the hall must be the storage closet. There were already a few small boxes sitting outside. Ryan checked his watch and saw it was only 9.58. He was certain she had said 10, did he miss here? Nora dropped his hand and went running ahead. Ryan took quick steps to catch up with her. When he made it to the open door and peered around, his eyes grew wide as he looked inside. He was expecting a few shelves with rows of boxes. This wasn't that dot. He took a few steps inside the closet, shocked by the size. This wasn't a closet, it was a small warehouse. Michaela was nowhere in sight, but footsteps above told him she was on the second floor of the place. The place he had no idea had two floors. Miss Wilkes, he called out, hoping he didn't startle her dot. The footsteps overhead stopped briefly, and a thud sounded before the footsteps started again, faster this time as they moved to the back of the room dot. Up here. He heard her call out from the top of the stairs dot. Ryan took Nora's hand again. Watch your step, and stay close, he told her. They walked past shelves of Christmas decorations, spring colors, and rows of what looked like costumes from school plays. They made their way up the stairs. Halfway up he looked and saw Michaela standing at the top dot. Ryan's heart skipped a beat when he saw her. Her long, curly hair was pulled back in a low ponytail, but wisps of it had escaped and framed her face. The light from the overhead window crept in behind her and practically made her glow. Ryan sucked in a breath. Okay God, help me here dot. Michaela smiled and reached out for Nora's hand. Are you ready to be a big helper today? Yes, ma'am, Nora's voice was quiet, but she jumped up and down just the tiniest bit as she reached her teacher dot. Her teacher. Ryan reminded himself. She's Nora's teacher. I can't just ask her out in the storage closet of the school. He told himself to calm down as he heard Michaela and Nora's laughter moving towards the back of the room. Dot. Coming? Michaela asked, looking over her shoulder at him. Dot. Oh, he was in trouble. Yes, he said. He waited several more beats to give them space in front of him and to think of a game plan. From the looks of it, they might be here for a while, and he wasn't sure how his heart would handle it. Dot. Ryan cleared his throat as he moved forward, the sounds of his footsteps against the wood floor echoing through the upstairs. Dot. Michaela turned and grinned as he reached them. She still held Nora's hand in hers, with her other hand she gestured. These are all the fall decorations. Ryan's eyes widened as he stared at the three rows of shelves that must have spanned twelve feet across. Wow, he said. This is more than I expected. Michaela nodded. There's a lot here, but a lot of it is collected from several years when they use different themes or colors. So we don't have to use all of it. But we have to decide what we want to use and carry it all down. Gotcha. Do you know what you're looking for? I like the traditional theme with fall colors. Orange, yellow, red, leaves and hay bales. That kind of thing. Ryan rubbed his chin. I agree. That sounds good. So where is that stuff? Michaela clenched her teeth dramatically. That's just the thing. I don't know. I thought they might be labeled and organized. But it doesn't look that way. You mean you don't know what's in any of these containers or boxes? His inner business consultant squirmed at the thought. She shook her head. Nope. Huh. Ryan scratched his head. Then I guess we better get started. He rubbed his hands together and pulled a box off the shelf. Dot. With that box? She tilted her head, looking confused. Dot. Do you know what's in this box? He asked. No, she admitted. Ryan shrugged. Then I guess this box is as good of a place to start as any of them. Michaela laughed. Good point. She stepped back and picked up a clipboard off the floor. 
I thought we could make a list and separate what we want to use. And I have labels, so maybe someone else won't have to look through every box in the future. Ryan bent over to set the box on the floor, but now he glanced up at her. That's smart. And helpful. It's exactly what he would tell one of his clients to do. Dot. Michaela reached for a box on the middle shelf. I thought so. When she slid the box off the shelf, her eyes widened as the full weight fell on her. Oof. Ryan rushed towards her, trying to catch the box. Instead, he caught her as she stepped backwards and her back crashed into his chest. Dot. I'm sorry, Michaela blurted. I didn't realize it was so heavy. Are you okay? He breathed in, and the smell of strawberries and honey tickled his senses. He hated that she moved away so quickly. Dot. Michaela let him take the box and ran her hand through the ends of her ponytail. I'm fine. Thanks. She nodded at the box. Dot. No problem. Here, he said, setting the box on the floor near his own. Dot. He pulled a third box down and let Nora peek through it. Dot. Ryan opened his box and dug through the decorations. How long have you been teaching here? Michaela glanced at him, seeming surprised at the question. I've been at Heritage Academy for five years now. Wow. Have you always taught first grade? She nodded as she held up a package of four-leaf clovers and made a face before she dropped them back in the box. At Heritage, yes. I taught third grade for a year before that at another school. Here in Twin Creeks. No. She picked up a few more items from the box before closing it up and reaching for her labels. I don't think we need this box. I'll label it so we can put it with the spring stuff. Ryan watched as she made the label, her handwriting perfect, and placed it on the side. She started to pick up the box, but he held up a hand. Don't do that. It's too heavy. I'll put it wherever it needs to go. She looked up and met his gaze only briefly before she cleared her throat and looked away. Sure, thanks. So where did you teach before Heritage? Oh, she tossed over her shoulder as she went to the shelf for another box. Dot. Suddenly Ryan realized maybe she didn't want to talk about it. Never mind, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. His voice was kind, but he really hoped she would talk to him. Dot. Michaela turned and her smile was sad. No, it's fine. I taught at an elementary school in Hope's Bluff, Tennessee. Ryan nodded. How far away is that from here? Michaela stared at the box as she placed it on the floor. About four hours. What brought you to Twin Creeks? I grew up in Hope's Bluff. I loved it. It's small and the community is wonderful, it's a lot like Twin Creeks really. But you didn't want to stay there? Ryan asked, testing the boundaries with his question. I did. Or I thought I did for a long time. But you know, in a small town, everybody knows your business. And when your life takes a turn you don't expect, well everybody knows that too. Ryan nodded. He did know. I understand that. So I moved to Twin Creeks for a fresh start. Ryan studied her. He wanted to ask what the unexpected turn was. Did someone hurt her? Did she hurt someone else? He was afraid to ask, especially in front of Nora, but he desperately wanted to know. If you'd like to talk about it sometime, I would be happy to listen. You know, he jerked his head at his daughter, when there aren't little ears in the cornfield. Michaela smiled. I would like that. Then she left. I've never heard anybody else say that, but my mom used to say it all the time. Of course, she was talking about me. Oh yeah? Were you a little eavesdropper? Definitely. Michaela's eyes sparkled. I was always hanging around the adults while they were trying to have grown-up conversations. My parents learned to talk in code. Ryan laughed. That could be useful. You'll have to tell me some of the codes. Michaela's eyes met his, and she seemed to consider that. Are you saying you want to talk in code? Ryan swallowed hard. Did he dare? 
I think it would be nice. He said. Dot. Michaela nodded slowly, dropping her eyes to the floor. I think so too. Look. Nora burst out, causing both adults to turn. Pumpkins. Ryan looked back at Michaela and the two laughed. Dot. What? Nora's face flooded with concern, as if she'd said something wrong. Dot. Nothing, Michaela said. That's great. I think you found the box we're looking for. Or at least one of them, Ryan said, pointing at the shelf. I'm sure we need more. And I'm thinking we might be here all day. Michaela's face clouded with concern. Do you have somewhere you need to be? I don't want to keep you. Ryan couldn't resist the urge. He reached up and touched her arm. The sensation sent a thrill from his fingertips to his heart. No, nowhere else to be. And I'm happy to be here, even for the whole day. Did he see the slightest tint of pink in her cheeks? Was it from what he said or from moving the heavy boxes? Perfect, she said. I want to make sure this is the best carnival we've ever had. It will be the best one I've ever been to, Ryan said, smiling at her dot. Me too, Nora jumped up. Miss Wilkes, what's the fall festival like? Oh, it's so much fun. Michaela's eyes lit up as she moved to Nora and began describing the event. Dot. Ryan stopped looking through the box he was working on as he watched Michaela with Nora. He barely heard the words she was saying, but he watched her expression. She moved her hands in the air, describing booths and games. Nora's face lit up as Michaela mentioned candy and cupcakes and music. Dot. A silent sigh escaped his lips as he watched the two of them together. Nora asked questions and told Miss Wilkes what she thought her favorite part would be, and Michaela nodded in excitement. He hadn't seen his daughter talk to anyone like that in her whole life. Dot. And if he was honest, he hadn't felt drawn to anyone like he felt drawn to Michaela in a very long time. Chapter 13 Michaela walked into her tiny apartment and dropped her bag on the floor as she collapsed on the couch. She didn't know when she had ever been so physically tired. They had lifted dozens of boxes off the shelf to look through and find all the decorations. Her fingers were dry from all the labels she had written and stuck onto the boxes. Her muscles ached from carrying boxes to the shelves where they belonged. Her mind reeled, knowing that the rest of the closet was likely as disorganized as the fall decorations. She thought she should tell Mrs. Holloway that the whole place should be cleaned out but was afraid she would be assigned the job. Dot. A smile spread over her face, wondering if Ryan would volunteer to help her with the whole storage closet. Yes, it had been an exhausting day, but it was also one of the best days she'd had in a long time. Who knew it could be so enjoyable to sort through decorations? Her thoughts went back and forth between Ryan and Nora. Ryan had been the perfect gentleman. Starting with saving her from dropping the first box she picked up. Maybe she wouldn't have been hurt, but it would have been a mess. When he came close, she felt safe and warm. The smell of his warm cologne with hints of amber might forever be etched in her memory. Dot. Then there was Nora, who was so excited about every special little item she found. To tell the truth, Nora was the one who found all of the fall decorations. Michaela and Ryan kept coming up with Christmas, Easter, and other random holidays. Michaela had watched Nora, the girl who was usually reserved and said few words, jump up and down and talk all about her favorite celebrations. Dot. Michaela stole a glance at Ryan as Nora described her fourth birthday party, a princess affair with a tea party. Ryan's smile held a touch of sadness, and she wondered what put it there. Dot. She didn't have long to wonder, since Nora wrapped up her story and Ryan stood, causing Michaela to look up at him from where she sat on the floor. Dot. As Ryan brushed his hands off, Michaela thought she saw glitter fly into the air. She pressed her lips together to suppress her giggle at the sight of this tall, handsome man with glitter floating around him. I know we're not done, Ryan said, but I think it's time for a break. As if on cue, Michaela's stomach rumbled. Dot. Ryan must have heard it, but he covered by saying, I'm hungry. Who wants lunch? Me. Me. Nora jumped up to say dot. Michaela wanted to respond the same way. 
Yes, she wanted lunch, but she could have jumped up and down at the idea of having lunch with Ryan Dot. Instead, she stood slowly, she imagined going to lunch and sitting beside Ryan with Nora talking excitedly. Just as fast, she realized what that would look like if anyone from the school saw them. Her stomach dropped as she remembered the official policy on teacher relationships, no inter-faculty dating, and no dating current students' parents. A tiny sigh escaped her lips. Even if they weren't dating, eating out together in public could cause a problem not. What if we pick up something and eat here? She suggested Dot. Ryan met her eyes. He looked a little disappointed, but then nodded as if he understood. Sure, sounds good. The corners of his mouth turned up, and his eyes twinkled. How about Chinese? Michaela smiled back at him. I love Chinese. Great, he said. I think I know your order. Now on her couch, Michaela put her hand to her mouth to cover a yawn. Ryan had known her order perfectly. He and Nora left to pick up the food and brought it back, and they ate on the floor of the storage closet. Dot. Her stomach was sore now from how they had laughed and talked. She let out a happy sigh. It was fun. She wanted it to go on forever. But eventually, they had all the decorations they needed laid out on the gym floor. The rest of the committee would be there Monday afternoon when they arrived to put up the decorations and set up booths. The time of Michaela and Ryan talking alone was over. Dot. It was too bad. He was nice, and somehow they had fallen into a comfortable friendship. Even having Nora there felt natural. But it couldn't be anything more. Michaela had her job to think about. She wished they could explore what was there without a risk, but she could easily lose her job if they went out. She couldn't risk the things she loved for a chance with a guy. She had learned the hard way not to think things would last forever. Dot. She sighed again as she stood and went to shower, but not a happy sigh like before. As she readied for bed, Michaela's thoughts drifted to her life in Hope's Bluff. For so long, she thought she knew what her life would look like graduate from college, get married, teach school, and have a family. All without ever leaving her little town. Nothing turned out the way she planned. After her high school boyfriend broke up with her, she felt lost and alone in the home she loved. She wouldn't let that breakup define her. She would be better than that. When Claire said she was a positive person, it was hard to swallow because she's been negative for a long time. She chose to be positive and to make a fresh start in a new place. She knew better than to plan her life around a guy, and she wouldn't do that again. As she climbed into bed, a familiar sadness crept her. It brought disappointment for what she had already lost and a reminder of the future she knew she couldn't have. Chapter 14 Nora, don't go too far, Ryan called out. It was no use. She was already out of earshot. He wasn't really worried about her. Besides, he hadn't seen her this excited before, and he was thrilled that she was running off to enjoy the fall carnival with her friend. He watched her from a distance and saw that she found Josie, and the two girls linked hands as they headed off in the direction of the cakewalk. Ryan followed, but let them have their space. She looks happy. Ryan didn't immediately turn but stopped walking when he recognized the voice. He wished he could turn and take her in his arms. Yes, she was really looking forward to tonight. Ryan glanced over his shoulder and saw Michaela. He wasn't sure how, but she sure made the polo with the school logo on it look good. All the teachers wore the uniform, but she looked better than any of the others. When he faced her, he surprised himself by admitting, I was looking forward to it too. Michaela smiled. Me too. Of course, I think all the kids have been excited. My class could barely contain themselves today. Oh yeah? Wild bunch? Michaela laughed. They can be. But it's such a fun group. I love what I do. I can tell, Ryan said, his eyes meeting hers. And really, I can't thank you enough. I was so nervous about Nora starting school here. She's so quiet and shy, and I didn't know if she would ever make friends. But I'm so glad that she has. 
Michaela bit her lip, seeming to hold back her emotions. Josie is a sweet girl, I'm so glad they've been fast friends. Ryan nodded. Me too. But she has more friends too. She likes you a lot. I like her a lot too, Michaela said. Dot. Ryan cleared his throat, knowing he couldn't say what he was actually thinking, that he liked Michaela too. So, do you have a lot of responsibilities, tonight? He turned his attention back to the festival and caught a glimpse of Nora walking around the circle at the cakewalk. Dot. Just overseeing mostly. I'm just walking around and checking on things. If anyone has a problem, I'll help. Just walking around, huh? Yep. I'm just following Nora around, but she seems to be doing fine. So I think I could just walk around too. Michaela stared at him for a moment, before a slow smile spread. That sounds nice. I can show you around since you're a first-timer. Oh yes, I might be lost if you don't. Michaela kept the grin on her face as they fell into step beside each other. We have a couple of booths that are here every year. The cakewalk is one. Nora may never leave that one. She's determined to win a cake before the night is over. Michaela laughed. If she sticks around long enough, she probably will. She pointed out another booth. The dunking booth is always popular too. Later tonight some of the teachers will be sitting up there and the kids have to pay a dollar for a chance to knock them in the water. When is it your turn? Ryan teased Dot. Nope, nope. Michaela held her hands up. I volunteer and do the planning and the setup, so I don't have to take that chance. You're not afraid of water, are you? No, not afraid of water, just not a fan of getting dunked in front of everyone. Besides, once this hair is wet, the curls are crazy. I would be a frizz ball. Ryan raised his eyebrows in interest. Really? I think I might need to see that. Oh no, I don't think so. At least not tonight in front of the whole school. Ryan grinned and again they fell into step. They didn't speak, although the hum of the room made it anything but silent. Still, it was comfortable. He could imagine walking around this room with her as a couple. What would it be like to hold hands with her and stay close as they explored the festival? He stopped himself from thinking about that anymore as Nora came running up to them. He opened his arms, expecting her to come to him. Instead, she ran full force right into Michaela's arms. Ryan's heart felt as if it could burst seeing the two of them together. Dot. Miss Wilkes. Look. I want a cupcake. Nora held up the plastic bag with her prize. Dot. Yay. That's wonderful. Michaela bent down to her level. What flavor is it? Chocolate, that's my favorite, Nora answered. Dot. Ryan stepped back to take it in as Michaela and Nora went back and forth. Nora described the song that was playing and which number she was standing on when she won. Michaela kept her eyes on Nora, never wavering. Ryan ached as he saw the light in Nora's eyes. She had never known that attention from a woman. Ryan had done his best to give her his all as a parent, but was it enough for a little girl to grow up with only a dad and not a mother to dote on her and listen to her stories? Dad, 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 Nora said, jumping up and down. Can I go do the games with Josie? She pointed to her friend. A man and woman stood behind her dot. Um, I could come with you, Ryan said. It sounded more like a question than a statement. Dot. Nora shrugged. Her mom said I could go with them. Ryan's heart flipped, and he couldn't say for sure if it was sad or happy. Nora might not need him to go with her, but she finally had a friend and wasn't too shy to go spend time with her. Dot. If it's all right with you. The woman behind Josie stepped out. I'm Tara, Josie's mom. This is my husband, Nathan. Ryan stepped forward and reached out to shake hands. Ryan Baker, it's nice to meet you. Nora talks about Josie all the time. Tara laughed. Oh yes, all Josie talks about is Nora, they really have hit it off. Ryan took a quick glance at Michaela and saw the smile on her face. Yes, they have. 
Nora, it's fine with me if you go with Josie. Y'all have fun. We'll keep an eye on them, Tara said. Ryan nodded as the girls ran off together. They're very nice people. They go to the same church as I do. Ryan felt the skin on the back of his neck prickle at Michaela's closeness. Thanks. I don't think I have too much to worry about. I can see just about the whole carnival from anywhere. Miss Wilkes. One of the committee members burst out as she made her way towards them. Hi, Mrs. Lewis, is everything all right? No, no, it's not. We've got a problem. The panic was evident on the woman's face. Ryan watched as Michaela held her hands up and breathed slowly. Let's just calm down. What's the problem? We're out of tickets for the raffle. Out. How? Michaela's eyes grew wide. We can't possibly be out, we had hundreds. Mrs. Lewis shook her head. I know, but we're out. We've sold more raffle tickets than ever. Wow. Michaela covered her hand with her mouth and stepped back. Okay, I think there are more in the supply closet, I'll go find them. I'll help, Ryan said, the words escaping his mouth, before he even realized he was saying them. Dot. Michaela turned and looked at him. She looked happy, sort of. But also maybe a little afraid. Dot. Um, don't you need to stay with Nora? Ryan shrugged. She's with Josie's family. I think it's all right. And I've seen that storage room. You probably need my help. Michaela nodded as she left. You're right. Either way, Mrs. Lewis said. I'm going to keep selling and writing names on paper until we have the tickets. Sounds like a plan. We'll be as quick as we can. Michaela didn't look back at Ryan as she took off toward the gym exit. Dot. Ryan couldn't help but notice that she seemed uncomfortable talking to him in front of Mrs. Lewis. She had also stepped back until Josie's parents were out of earshot. Was she embarrassed to be seen talking to him? Or just concerned about what other people would think? He didn't know for sure if there were rules about teachers and parents, but maybe he should find out. Dot. For now, he took quick steps to follow her out of the gym and down the hall to the storage closet. She made it to the door, but he caught it as she walked through. Dot. Thanks, she said, her voice low. The door slammed behind them, and she jumped. Her voice sounded nervous when she said, I think there are some tickets upstairs on a shelf. She headed for the stairs with Ryan at her heels. I'll look on this shelf if you want to start over there. She pointed to two shelves at opposite ends of the room. Dot. Was she trying to cover more ground or keep distance between them? Ryan silently walked to the shelf and began reading labels on the boxes they had organized the week before. He didn't remember putting tickets on any of them. Did she remember that? Found them. Michaela called out Dot. Great, Ryan said, even though he felt disappointed that this errand didn't take longer. He would have loved talking to her in the storage closet for the rest of the night. Dot. Let's go, she said, turning to the stairs. Dot. Ryan crossed the room and started down in front of her. Michaela carried the roll of tickets, but she seemed in a great hurry to get back. She practically ran down the steps. Ryan heard the moment she missed her footing. He braced himself and managed to turn his upper body just in time to catch her dot. Oof, Michaela said, crashing into his chest and watching the roll of tickets bounce down the stairs. Dot. You okay? Ryan asked, scanning her face. Dot. She reached up to push her curls off her forehead. I'm fine, thanks. She giggled. This is becoming a little familiar. Ryan grinned. Happy to be here to catch you any time. Michaela laughed again, but then her expression turned serious. Dot. Ryan watched as her eyes flicked down to his mouth and then back up to his eyes. He wanted to take his own glance at her lips, but knew that would be too tempting. He took a deep breath, catching the scent of her. It took everything in him not to lean in closer. He grasped her shoulders and pushed her upright on the stair above him. Dot. She cleared her throat before she passed him to walk down the last few stairs, 
picking up the tickets and leading the room. Ryan let her go ahead, knowing he needed a minute. He definitely needed to find out about that rule for teachers and parents. Chapter 15 Michaela knew the rules about parents and teachers dating. It was clearly laid out in the handbook. Saturday morning, she sat on the couch with her coffee in hand. She sipped the hot beverage, while her emotions came in waves. How could this possibly be happening? All this time she had waited to meet someone she could enjoy spending time with and care for, and it was against the rules to date him not. Not that he had asked to date her. So maybe she was getting ahead of herself, but he had definitely seemed interested. Not. He had been the one to offer to help her find the tickets, hadn't he? Would he do that just to be nice? It wasn't exactly a two-person job. She could have done it herself. Actually she did do it herself, but he had almost seemed disappointed that it didn't take longer. Not. Then there was the moment on the stairs. Her heart picked up speed and goosebumps covered her arms just thinking about it. They had been so close she could smell him and feel his breath on her cheek. His arms on hers felt so right that she wished she could just lean in and wrap her arms around him. She closed her eyes and let herself imagine that dot. No. She sat up and shook her head. No, I can't think about that. He's the dad of one of my students, and I can't change that. She sipped her coffee. Maybe next year when Nora wasn't in her class, since the rule only applied to students in your own class. She sighed, but she didn't want to wish the year with Nora away, they were just getting started. Dot. She stood from the couch and shook her head. God, she prayed out loud. I know I've been asking for you to send someone for a long time, but how can this be it? She hadn't forgotten the words she had heard at church that Sunday, today is the day. But did God mean, this is the one? Was Ryan really someone she could have a future with? She wasn't interested in dating for fun, those days had passed. Before her one serious relationship, she'd had her share of casual dates in high school, and it hadn't been all bad. When one or two dates didn't turn into anything, it wasn't that big of a deal. But she was older now, and hopefully wiser. And a relationship with one of her students' fathers wasn't something to be taken lightly. She made her way to the kitchen and began doing the dishes while she wondered if there was ever an exception to the school's policy. Her phone ringing was a welcome distraction from her thoughts. Hey, Claire. What are you doing right now? Michaela glanced around at her tiny kitchen, the dishes were almost done. Just cleaning up around my apartment. Perfect, that doesn't take you long, right? Michaela blinked and told herself that her friend didn't mean it as an insult. Nope. It definitely did not take long to clean up her one-bedroom apartment, especially since she was the only one who lived there. Dot. Great, then you can come hang out with me today. Claire's voice was unusually chipper this morning. Dot. Why, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm just bored, and I don't want to spend the whole day cooped up. It's a nice, fall day, and it's perfect to be outside. We could go to Wald Park and walk around. Um, okay, sure. Wald Park was lovely, and it was perfect for a walk in the autumn weather with the changing leaves. It was also where lots of families would want to spend their time on a Saturday. It was nice, but it was also full of reminders of what Michaela dreamed about but didn't have. I can meet you there in an hour. Yay! We can pick up something for lunch and have a picnic. Michaela nodded, even though her friend wasn't there to see. Sounds good. An hour later, Michaela stepped out of her car at the park. She tucked her phone and keys in her jean pocket as she made her way toward the walking path that wound around a large field. As she expected, the space was filled with families, kids, and couples. Some sat on blankets, others ran and played. Michaela told herself to just enjoy the time and not overthink it. Hey. Michaela turned and waved to her friend who had secured a spot. Claire sat on a colorful patchwork quilt, and she set down the book she held. Dot. Oh, I should have brought a book, that's a good idea. Claire half laughed, half sighed. It's not really. I just need to finish reading this book before Monday. 
It's really not fair that I'm the teacher, and here I am doing my homework on the weekend. Michaela laughed. You can't complain. You're the one who assigned it. Hmm, yeah, sort of. But actually, the school assigned it. Really? I thought you picked your own curriculum. I do pick a lot of things. But we have a required reading list. I think they like it to stay consistent between teachers. You know teachers at our school aren't known for sticking around more than a few years. Michaela sighed. I've heard that. People talked about it when Mrs. Simpson left last year. Everybody said it was time, since most teachers only stay two to three years. But I don't understand why. Claire shrugged. I don't know that it's really bad. Just how it goes. I think most move on with their husbands' jobs or decide to stay home when they start having kids. There are exceptions, you know Mrs. Patterson, she's been there forever. And Mrs. Kendall will probably teach kindergarten until she dies. But a lot of new, young teachers start at Heritage, and when their life situation changes, they move on. Michaela nodded. That makes sense. She tried to sound cheerful as she elbowed Claire. Not us though. No life changes for us. I guess we'll stick around. Claire took a deep breath and blew her bangs off her forehead. I guess so. I don't have any plans to go anywhere. And no prospects either. Prospects? You know what I mean. No guy. Michaela nodded. She definitely knew what she meant. Same here. Miss Wilkes. Michaela heard the voice call out but didn't have time to turn her head before two little arms encircled her neck. She braced herself to keep from falling, even though she hadn't fully caught a glimpse of the girl, she knew who it was. Nora. She squeezed her as the girl snuggled against her. She glanced up in the direction from where Nora had come, and her heart threatened to jump out of her chest when she saw Ryandot. What are you doing here? Nora asked, peeling herself away from her teacher. Dot. I'm enjoying a lovely day at the park. Michaela fought to keep her voice even as Ryan neared. What are you doing here? The same thing. Nora said, as if she couldn't believe it. But now it's an even better day. Oh, really? Yes, because you're here. Michaela smiled at her. I'm glad to see you too. Looking up at Ryan again only made her blush. Dot. And what about me? He asked. Dot. Michaela cleared her throat and tried not to show the shock on her face. He was pushing it. Of course, always happy to see both of you. There, that sounded like a normal thing to say to a parent of her student, didn't it? One glance at Claire told her it didn't dot. Have you eaten? Ryan asked. We brought sandwiches. Do you mind if we eat here? Michaela shook her head. Sure. We brought food too. She pointed to Claire. This is Claire, uh, uh I mean Miss Palmer. She teaches at Heritage too. Nice to meet you. Ryan extended a hand. Ryan Baker. This is Nora. Nora is in my class, Michaela explained. Dot. Claire gave her a look that said that wasn't necessary. Yeah, I figured that out. Nice to meet you. Join us, I'm starving, I was just trying to be polite and wait for Michaela, I mean Miss Wilkes, to get here. Great. We can all eat together. Ryan lifted up the bag he held. I'll try not to be jealous of your takeout while we have PB&J. Michaela grinned. PB&J is my favorite. Really? Want to trade? He offered Dot. Michaela lifted her bag with a grilled chicken salad. I have a salad. He wrinkled his nose. Nah, I'll stick with the sandwich. Michaela moved over and motioned to the other half of the quilt. Have a seat, we have plenty of room. Nora plopped down right next to Michaela, and Ryan handed her a sandwich and a bag of chips. PB and J is my favorite too. You're a lucky girl then, to have a dad who will fix your favorite sandwich for a day at the park. 
Nora squinted and looked over at Ryan and then back and Michaela. Yeah, he's okay I guess. Michaela laughed. Dot. Ryan reached over and poked Nora in the ribs. Okay? Just okay? What is that about? Nora giggled and almost dropped her food. Okay, okay, you're great. Just great? Ryan asked. Dot. Best dad in the whole world, Nora squealed. Dot. Ryan laughed as he sat back and opened his own sandwich. That's what I thought. He winked at Michaela. Dot. Michaela turned her attention to her food and stared intently at her salad. She wished she could watch Nora and Ryan together without being so obvious. It was adorable to watch how Nora looked at him. What would it be like to be the recipient of the attention he lavished on her? So, this is how you spend your time off? Ryan asked. Dot. Well, today it is. Michaela said. Dot. What else do you like to do? Michaela looked up and wondered if he really wanted to know. And what did she have to say? Her life wasn't that interesting. In fact, if Claire hadn't invited her, she might be at home doing nothing today. Not much. I love my job, but I don't have a lot of hobbies. You like being outdoors though? Michaela shrugged. Sure, I guess. It's a nice day, so it seems a waste to be inside. Do you like hiking? Hmm. Michaela had to think about it. I haven't done much hiking, but I guess I would like it. Do you hike? She would definitely like hiking with Ryan. Not. He nodded. Love it. There's a lot of great places to hike around here. Nora jumped in. Our favorite is Moss Rock, there's a waterfall. Oh, that sounds nice. I've never been there. You should go. It's the perfect time of year, Ryan said. Maybe next weekend? Michaela's heart pounded and she didn't dare look at Claire. She was sure her mouth hung open wide, which mirrored Michaela's own emotions. Was he asking her to go hiking with him? Oh, um, well. Can we go, Daddy? Nora begged. Please, please. Ryan looked from Nora to Michaela and shrugged. I'm free next Saturday. Me? Next Saturday? With, dot you? Michaela couldn't form a whole sentence. I, um, I don't know. Ryan looked at her and his hopeful look turned to disappointment. I understand. Daddy, I'm all done. Can we go to the swings now? Nora asked. Dot. Ryan wrapped his half-eaten sandwich and brushed off his hands. Sure, let's go. He looked at Michaela. Okay, if I leave our stuff here? Sure, no problem, Michaela answered. Ryan smiled before he turned and jogged off with Nora. Dot. Michaela watched in silence. Dot. What was that all about? Claire interrupted the quiet. Dot. Michaela had almost forgotten she was there. Um, nothing. He's one of my classroom dads. Claire stared at her with a blank look. Right. You said that. But what is going on between you two? Her eyes grew wide. Do you like him? Michaela held her hands up. I can't. Let's just not do this. Oh, we're doing this. Girl, you like him. I can't like him. Michaela covered her face with her hands. Dot. Claire pulled one hand down from Michaela's face. But you do. Michaela sighed. Of course I do. What's not to like? He's handsome and kind, and he's great with his daughter. And he helped so much with the fall carnival. Oh, this is the guy from the fall carnival? What do you mean? You said you had someone helping you with getting out the decorations for the carnival, and when I talked to you afterward, you sounded all dreamy. So, he's the guy? Michaela nodded, guilt gripping her stomach. He's the guy. This is amazing. Claire clapped her hands together, then froze. Wait, but he's a dad. He's not married, right? 
Michaela bit her lip as she shook her head. No. I don't know all the details. But he's single. Then what's the problem? I mean, he obviously likes you. He practically just asked you out. What's the problem? How can you ask that? You know the problem. I do. What? He's a dad, in my class. Michaela spoke each word slowly and deliberately. Dot. Oh. Understanding dawned on Claire's face. Right. Michaela sighed. So, there's nothing to do. Hmm. Claire tapped her chin with her index finger. I don't know, maybe there's something to be done. Like what? Michaela kept her voice low. She didn't want to get her hopes up that somehow there was a way dot. Claire shrugged. Maybe you just get to know each other. There's no rule against that. And besides, Nora won't be in your class forever. I know. But that's why I don't need to get involved now. I don't want to rush into something that can't happen now. Claire nodded. I can understand that. She reached for her lunch bag and packed up the containers from the blanket. She glanced at her watch and pretended to be shocked. Oh, look at the time. I need to be going. What? Michaela said, panic in her voice. Why? You said you had all day. Oh, I know, but I just remembered I have to do, dot well something. No, you don't. You can stay right here with me. Claire jerked her head towards Ryan and Nora at the playground. Don't worry. You won't be lonely. Claire, dot don't you leave me. Trust me. I'm doing you a favor. Claire winked. Just bring the blanket to me later. Michaela started to protest, but Claire held her hand up. Dot. Just enjoy the day. If he talks to you, then just be yourself. Like I said, there's no rule against talking to someone at the park where you both happen to be at the same time. Michaela sighed as Claire walked away. Technically, she was right. But their school administration could be pretty strict. She didn't want to be getting too close to breaking the rules. Miss Wilkes, did you see me on the monkey bars? Nora said as she ran to her and jumped on the blanket. Dot. I did. Michaela smiled. You're so brave, and you did it by yourself. Daddy was there just in case I fell. I saw that. Michaela couldn't help but look at Ryan. He seemed to be standing back and studying her dot. If only they didn't need to keep their distance. Michaela wanted nothing more than for him to come sit beside her on the blanket, for the three of them to enjoy the day at the park together. Maybe there was nothing wrong with that. Claire was right, there was no rule against getting to know someone. And if God kept pushing them together like this, maybe she should just relax and let it happen. Because if there was one thing she knew, it was that she wanted to know Ryan Baker better. Chapter 16 Ryan could have watched Michaela and Nora together all day. Running into her at the park had been the best thing that could have happened during his weekend. But he could tell she was hesitant around him. Was he coming on too strong? Was she trying to tell him she wasn't interested? No, he didn't believe that. Every time their eyes met, he could feel the connection between them. And he just knew she felt it too. Dot. But now he was supposed to be focusing on the sermon. He had barely heard a few words. His mind was elsewhere, wondering what it would be like to sit in church with Michaela next to him. Maybe they would hold hands and look at the same Bible. Dot. He shook himself and looked at the Bible verse on the screen. He couldn't be thinking about that right now. They would have to talk soon. He needed to know if she was interested at all before he let himself go down that road. Duh. After church, Nora hurried him out the door. After talking about Moss Rock the day before, she had begged to go Sunday afternoon instead of waiting a week. Ryan had no reason not to. A couple of hours later, Nora and Ryan had eaten lunch, changed into hiking clothes, and headed to Moss Rock. The weather was perfect. As they pulled into the parking lot, 
he realized plenty of other people must have thought the same thing. The lawn around the pavilion was covered with people. He glanced towards the entrance to the trail and saw that not as many people were hiking, so maybe it wouldn't be too crowded. Nora climbed out and rushed towards the trail. He kept an eye on her as he pulled out the backpack that held their water bottles and snacks. As he neared the trail, he nearly came to a stop on the sidewalk. A smile broke wide across his face, and his heart felt as if it might explode out of his chest. Michaela sat on the bench by the entrance. She was already talking to Nora, but when she looked up and saw him, he saw her smile. Yep, he was a goner. And if her look was any indication, he was in good company. Hi, he said, standing in front of her. Hey, she said. I thought you were planning to come next weekend. Ryan laughed. We were, but Nora talked me into it today. He winked. You made it sound so fun, I thought I should try it out. Especially since it's such a nice day. Want to walk with us? Michaela stood, her eyes twinkling, only a small hint of hesitation. Only if you don't mind waiting on a novice. I'm not really much of a hiker. We can take the beginner trail. It's easier for Nora too. And that way we won't be too out of breath for talking. Talking? Michaela asked. Dot. Ryan nodded firmly, his eyes serious. Yes, I have something I'd like to talk to you about. Michaela nodded too. Let's get going. Nora shouted, Yay, and was running off before they could catch up. Dot. She's fine, Ryan said. She won't get too far ahead. Michaela fell into step beside him, and they walked in silence for a little bit. Were you in church this morning? She asked. I didn't see you. We were. We sat in the back and left right after the service. I wanted to get here soon. He didn't say that he was a little afraid to talk to her in front of other people. They would be sure to notice he had feelings for her. Dot. So, um. Michaela slowed her steps and seemed nervous. What was it you wanted to talk about? Ryan cleared his throat. For starters, I'm really glad you came today. She turned and gave him a shy smile. Me too. I enjoy spending time with you. Michaela only nodded. Dot. Ryan pointed up ahead of them. And Nora does too. Really, I can't tell you how grateful I am that you're her teacher. She has been shy and quiet for so long. But she opened right up to you, and it's like she's finally able to be the fun, bright little girl she is. She's always been that way really, but only around me. She's never taken to someone like she has to you. Michaela smiled. I really like her too. She's such a sweet girl, and I just knew there was something inside of her waiting to come out. I can't take all the credit though. Josie has been the perfect friend for her. I think she gave Nora the confidence to be herself. Yes, but you did that too. Michaela nodded. Yes, I hope so. But it's more than just Nora. I enjoy being around you, and I'd like to get to know you better. I haven't spent time with, dot well with a woman in a very long time. Not since Nora's mom. Michaela furrowed her eyebrows. Ryan wished he knew what she was thinking. What happened? If you don't mind me asking. Ryan took a deep breath and stared off down the trail. Where would he start? I don't mind at all. It's a long story. Michaela smiled. I think we have time. Actually, it's not that long. Nora's mother, Tiffany, and I got married young. We were happy, or at least I thought we were. She got pregnant when we'd only been married a few months, and she just kind of freaked out. She said she wasn't ready and she had wanted to live life more before we settled down and had kids. He paused to rub his chin. Sorry, I just haven't talked about this in a long time. Michaela reached over and touched his arm. It's all right. I'm happy to hear whatever you want to tell me. He looked at her then, wishing he could take her hand in his as he walked and talked. He told himself to focus. I told her it would be fine. 
I would help, and it would be a great adventure to be parents. He shrugged. She seemed okay about it. But I could tell that she still wished it hadn't happened so soon. I assumed she would be better once the baby came. I just knew she would be a good mom and we would figure it out together. He stopped talking as they walked. Dot. Nora ran up. Look, Daddy, I found a pine cone. She held up the treasure for both of them to see. Dot. Oh, it's a tiny one, Michaela said. Like a little baby pine cone. I'm going to see if I can find more. Nora took off again. Dot. Ryan continued. After Nora was born, things were better at first. I did the best I could to help. I changed diapers and got up at night. I was exhausted, but I was so happy. Nora was perfect and I just couldn't imagine life being more wonderful. Michaela gave him a look as if she understood. But she wasn't happy? Ryan shook his head. No, she wasn't. She tried at first, I think. But it didn't last long. She couldn't wait to go back to work when Nora was six weeks old. That was fine. I thought it would be good for her to have some time away during the day. Nora started daycare and she went to work. But it wasn't long before she started staying extra hours, working until after Nora was asleep. She seemed happier during the week, but then Saturday would roll around and I would be excited about spending the day as a family. She wasn't interested, she wanted to have her alone time, or she would stay in bed. That must have been so hard on you. He swallowed. It was, but I also knew something was wrong. I tried to get her to spend time with friends, or even to get help. I wasn't sure if she was depressed or just unhappy. But she didn't want to talk to anyone. He paused, hating to say the words. I didn't know she was applying for jobs in other states until she was gone. Michaela gasped as her hand flew to her mouth. She just left? He nodded. I took Nora to my parents for the weekend. Tiffany told me she didn't want to come. She said she needed a break. I wanted to argue, but I was tired of that. So I took Nora by myself. When we got home Sunday, she had packed her stuff and left a note. It said she hadn't been ready to be a mom, and she had been offered a job in New York and she couldn't pass up the opportunity. Michaela's eyes were still wide, but the sadness behind them was evident. I'm so sorry, Ryan. He shrugged. Me too. I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. I called her, emailed her, but she didn't take my calls and her only response to my emails was to say she was sorry it didn't work out and that her lawyer would send me the divorce papers. Michaela shook her head. I just can't believe that. I can't imagine walking away from her own baby. I can't either. But it's what happened. When I got the papers, I signed them. I still have the same phone number and email address, and I've never heard another word from her. Dot. That's terrible. She sighed. But that part one can imagine. Ryan drew his eyebrows down. Oh. Why? Because I do know what it's like for someone to leave and never look back. The hurt in her eyes made Ryan want to reach out and take her hand. Who could have caused her that pain? Want to tell me about it? Michaela gave him a half-smile. She seemed to want to open up, but maybe she wasn't sure yet. Dot. You don't have to. No, I don't mind. It's just been a long time since I've talked about it. About him. So there was someone who hurt her. Ryan slowly nodded. I understand. He was my high school boyfriend. We grew up together and everyone always said we would get married, even when we were kids. We laughed because we thought it was just something grown-ups say to kids who play together. But our junior year of high school, everything changed. I fell fast. Must have been some guy. Michaela shrugged. I thought he was then. We did everything together. People called us the perfect couple. It felt that way for a long time. We talked about getting married and having a family. Most of my friends didn't know what they wanted to do with their lives, 
but I thought I was lucky because mine was already planned out. But that's not what happened. Michaela shook her head. No. We graduated, and he went to school in another state. We said we would make it work with the distance, and we would get married after we graduated. She paused and took a deep breath. That didn't last through the first semester. He called it Christmas and told me it was over. He said being away from our hometown had shown him there was more to life, and he wanted to see it all. I'm sure he had met someone else, or maybe more than one someone. I'm not saying he cheated while we were still together, but he decided there were more exciting girls than me. Ryan's heart squeezed in pain for her. This time he couldn't resist, and he reached out to brush his fingertips across her arm. He might have thought that. But I'm positive it was his loss. There was that half-smile again. Thanks. The worst part was everyone knew. His parents still lived in town. Even though we hadn't been officially engaged, everyone kind of considered that we were. So it felt like a broken engagement. Everywhere I went, I got the looks of pity. I went to college an hour away, but on the weekends I would come home and be reminded all over again when I saw someone in town. Ryan shook his head. I know how that feels. Small town life can be great. But when everyone feels sorry for you, you start to feel sorry for yourself too. After I graduated, I moved home and got a teaching job at the same school where I grew up. I stayed for a year. I thought it would be nice to be home, near my parents. But I was miserable. Everything reminded me of him. We had been in those same elementary school classrooms. We had eaten at those restaurants in high school and been to every place in town. I didn't want that to be my life. I didn't know where I wanted to go, but I wanted to get out. So you moved to Twin Creeks? She nodded. I thought about moving to a bigger city where everyone might not know me. But I still love the community of a small town. I started looking for jobs and applied to teach at about 10 different schools. Heritage Academy was always my first choice. I just felt drawn to it the first time I looked at the website. Me too, Ryan said. I had heard good things about it when we first moved here. But I put off looking into it until Nora was already in kindergarten. Once I took a look, something in me just said that was the place she needed to be. Michaela smiled. I think it's a great place to be. Ryan looked at her and knew that wherever she was that's where he wanted to be. Chapter 17 Michaela walked into her apartment Friday afternoon and dropped her bag as she sank onto the couch. What a week. Since Monday, it had been non-stop. Work was busy as usual, but as they were coming up on their fall break for Thanksgiving, there was a rush to complete certain assignments. The semester was flying by, and she felt like she was caught up in a whirlwind dot but not tonight. No sitting on the couch with movie playing while she worked on lesson plans tonight. Nope. Tonight she was going to forget about school and have fun. It had been too long since she'd been to dinner with her friends. So when Emily texted, girls night tonight. Be there. Michaela immediately agreed. Dot. After a quick rest, she headed to her closet to get ready. Surveying her choices, she almost reached for her familiar gray cardigan. She tapped her chin, remembering how much she looked like a schoolteacher, and tonight she didn't want to look like a schoolteacher. Behind her usual wardrobe were tops she had bought a while back, but had never worn. Staring at them now, she realized she liked them, but they seemed a little fancy, or not quite appropriate for work or church. And she hadn't been many other places lately. With a quick nod, she decided tonight was the night. She pulled out a purple top with bell sleeves. Dot. What would Ryan think of her in this outfit? Her eyes grew wide as she wondered where that thought had come from. She hadn't seen or talked to him since the hike on Sunday. She sighed as she thought of their talk. It had pained her to hear him talk about his wife leading them. How could anyone walk away from their husband and child and never look back? Michaela wished there was something she could say. But words failed her. And if she said too much, they would cross a line that she wasn't ready to cross. 
as much as she wished she could. As they left the trail, she wanted to tell him how much she'd enjoyed the time with him. But she found herself looking around to see if anyone she knew might see them together. Her nerves took over, and she was embarrassed by how quickly she said goodbye and ran to her car. Tonight she would put him out of her mind and enjoy the time with her friends. She smoothed her hand over her naturally curly hair, then slipped on a pair of dangly earrings she hadn't worn in ages. Yes, she would go have fun with her friends. A girl's night would be just the thing. And at least with just the girls, she didn't have to feel singled out as the only one who wasn't attached. Dot. When she arrived at the restaurant, she glanced at her phone to see that Emily had texted her, We're here, meet us in the back room. Dot. The back room? Michaela wondered out loud. The pizza place where she was meeting her friends was a popular local hangout, but the back room was usually reserved for larger groups. Why would the four of them need the back room? She made her way in through the back door and followed the noise toward the room. Hey! Emily and Ally greeted her at the same time and made their way over for hugs. Michaela glanced behind and immediately saw Jackson and Cole, with Travis and Julie nearby. We had a little mix up. The guys were supposed to be having their own dinner, but we didn't talk about where we were going and ended up at the same place. Ally laughed. Dot. Emily laughed too. Really? I dropped Cole off with Jackson and picked Ally up at her house. Then we both pulled into the parking lot at the same time. Oh. Michaela joined in their laughter. She smiled, despite her disappointment at being the extra wheel again. Dot. We had a good laugh with them, Ally said. I thought about going somewhere else, but since you were meeting us here and the guys were meeting Ryan, we just decided to hang out together. Ryan? Michaela's mouth dropped slightly open. Yes. Ryan answered when Michaela said his name. He had immediately recognized her long, curly hair when he walked in behind her. Dot. She turned, and he found himself speechless for a few seconds. He hadn't seen her in that color before. The purple really brought out the green in her eyes, and the earrings that moved when she turned made her look fun and carefree. Dot. Hey, she said. I didn't know you would be here. I didn't know you would be here, he countered. He looked to Ally and Emily. Actually, I thought it was just the guys. We're sorry. Emily said. We had a little mix-up. It wasn't planned. Promise. Ally said dot. Ryan held up a hand. No worries. I don't mind. He turned his gaze to Michaela. Nope, he didn't mind at all. He had been thrilled when Cole asked him to come. He hadn't been out with friends in a very long time. It seemed that God was answering his prayer for good friends. He hadn't dared to pray for a female friend, but it seemed maybe God was doing his own thing in that area. Dot. Hey, dude, Jackson said as he and the others made their way over. Glad you could make it. Thanks for the invite, Ryan said, shaking his hand. Have you met the ladies? Cole asked. Dot. Ryan looked at the two women he didn't know. Not officially. This is my wife, Ally, Jackson pointed. And my. Cole interrupted him. My fiance, Emily. Jackson chuckled. Right. Sorry, I'm just used to introducing her as my sister. I'll handle that now, Cole said. Ryan grinned. It's nice to meet you both. Travis stepped up. And this is my wife, Julie. And my sister, just for the record, Ally added dot. Jackson pointed beside Ryan. And this is Michaela. Ryan sucked in a breath at the sound of her name, wishing he could be the one to introduce her as his, the way the other men had. Yes, we know each other but I'm used to calling her Miss Wilkes. Oh. Jackson said. He and Cole both looked confused. Dot. She's my daughter's teacher. Oh, right. Of course. At Heritage Academy, right? Yep. Ryan nodded as he looked at Michaela. Dot. Jackson stepped close to Ally and put a hand to her belly. 
We might send our own little one there someday. Jackson. Ally swatted a hand at him. That's supposed to be a secret. The whole group laughed. Dot. Ally, you know it's not a secret, Emily said. You told us, and Jackson told the guys. Everyone knows. Well, maybe not Ryan. Ryan laughed. It felt good being in on the secret. Even if it wasn't really a secret, it made him feel included. Actually, I knew. Ally threw her hands up in the air. So everyone knows. That's fine. I didn't really want it to be a secret anyway. We're happy to celebrate with everyone. Yep, definitely. Jackson rubbed his hands together. So, who's ready to eat? Everyone agreed, and they made their way to the large table in the center of the room. Ryan had been to the pizza place before, but never been in this room. The table had enough seats for the whole group, but the room was set up for a full party. Comfortable chairs lined the sides of the room, and a giant TV hung on one wall. He could imagine it would be perfect for parties to watch football games or a movie. It had been a long time since he'd been to a gathering that large dot. As they took their seats, each of the couples sat next to each other. That left an open seat next to Michaela. Ryan didn't mind that. He only hoped he could pay attention to the conversation around the table and keep himself from staring at her all night. Dot. When their food arrived, Ryan couldn't believe how much fun he was having. Jackson and Cole kept everyone laughing, and Ryan found himself looking across the table to see Michaela's eyes light up as she enjoyed the time with her friends. She kept quiet most of the time, but when she spoke up, it was always worth listening. Dot. Michaela, Ally said. Tell us about when you moved into your apartment and the couch got stuck. Ryan turned to watch Michaela almost choked on her sweet tea as she laughed. Dot. She held up a hand. I can't. You know I can't make it through that story. I'd just end up laughing. And you've all heard it anyway. I haven't, Ryan said. He felt the eyes of everyone at the table on him and knew he must look a little too interested in Michaela at that moment. He glanced at each of them and shrugged. I can't be the only one here who doesn't know the story. Cole jumped in. He's right Michaela. If we're initiating Ryan into our group, he has to know the couch story. Come on Mac, tell it. Emily agreed. Dot. Okay, okay. Michaela held up her hands. She let out a huff and rolled her eyes towards the ceiling. But only because you begged for it. She straightened in her seat as if she was preparing to teach a lesson to her students. So when I moved to Twin Creeks, I didn't really know anyone. My parents and friends back home helped me load the moving van, and my dad drove the van the three hours here. Ally started giggling from the other end of the table. Dot. I'm not even to the funny part yet, Michaela said, putting her hands on her hips. Dot. I know. Ally put her hand over her mouth to try to stop but I know it's coming. Anyway, we get down here, to the apartment. I knew it was a small apartment, but I hadn't actually seen it in person. So we start unloading everything, and it's filling up pretty fast. But I had this couch that I wanted in my bedroom. It wasn't very heavy, and I thought there would be room. My dad wasn't sure, but I convinced him we should try. She gestured with her hands as she spoke and Ryan was riveted by the story. From the living room to the bedroom, there's a sharp turn. Long story short, my dad was right. Emily and Ally both burst out laughing. And Michaela couldn't help her own laughter. Ryan could feel the laughter bubbling up inside him as she tried to get the rest of the story out. Dot. We literally get the couch stuck. It's wedged in between the two doorways so tight that we can't get it to go forward or backward. We tried for 30 minutes with no luck. And finally, he went to Travis's rental store, gets a chainsaw and comes back and cuts the thing in pieces. Michaela gasped, for breath, between laughs. Everyone around the table was laughing. Dot. Ryan joined them. He didn't know when he had laughed like that. It felt good for his soul. And watching Michaela's face, he could hardly stand to look away. Dot. 
he was tempted to say that she was good for his soul too. When all the couples dispersed to their own cars, Ryan walked Michaela to hers. He noticed how everyone had made a point to say goodbye to them and leave them alone on their way out. Ryan grinned at the thought that his new friends were trying to help him out. This was fun, Michaela said. Yes, it was, Ryan agreed. I didn't know it, but I think it was just what I needed. Oh. Michaela turned and leaned against her car as if she wasn't in a hurry to leave. What's that? Friends, laughing, hanging out with other believers. It's been just me and Nora for so long, I think I've forgotten what it's like. Michaela smiled. I'm guilty of being the last one to agree to go out. If Emily hadn't texted, I would have sat on the couch watching a movie alone. Ryan studied her for a moment. I would think you have plenty of invitations on a Friday night. Michaela laughed. Then you'd be surprised. Most of the people I spend time with are six years old. Ryan wondered if he could push the issue right now, but decided against it. I liked that story about your dad, though. You must have a supportive family for him to help you move here. She nodded. They're pretty great. It's my parents and my sister. She's married and I have two nephews who keep everybody on our toes. You're right though, we're all supportive of each other. Was it hard to move away from them? Michaela bit her lip. She didn't speak for a moment, then cleared her throat. It was. I almost didn't do it, but I knew I needed somewhere new. God has been faithful. She pointed a thumb over her shoulder. Those people in there? They're my support system here. And my friend, Claire, too. If I hadn't met Emily and Ally when I moved here, I don't know what I would have done. They're the best friends I could have asked for. She laughed then. And now that they're married and engaged, they always offer their guys for heavy lifting. They're pretty good to have around too. Ryan wished he had those friends when he first moved here too. Maybe he wouldn't have spent so long being alone. And maybe he would have met Michaela before now. So, you think God brings certain people into our lives when we need them? Absolutely, Michaela said. She met his gaze then and didn't look away. Me too, Ryan said. Absolutely. Chapter 18 Michaela took a deep breath as she opened the storage room doors. She had been right about telling Mrs. Holloway about the state of the closet. Now she sipped coffee out of the styrofoam cup and prepared to spend her Saturday cleaning out and organizing. She was afraid it wouldn't be the only Saturday that it would require dot. With a sigh, she walked in and set her purse and coffee down on a table. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. She didn't mind helping. And really, what else would she be doing on a weekend? Her phone buzzed, and she had to dig in her bag to find it. Hello? She answered the number without a name dot. Hey, how's it going? Michaela almost dropped her phone at the sound of Ryan's voice. Um, hey. Pretty good. How are you? I'm fine. When he didn't say any more, she had to ask. How did you get my number? Ryan chuckled. You called me that day to ask me to be on the fall carnival committee. And you saved the number? Sure. I save most numbers. I like to be able to call people if I need to. A smile slowly made its way across her face. And you thought you might need to call me? He cleared his throat. Actually, yes I did. She tried to tell herself it was because his daughter was in her class. He couldn't mean that he wanted to call her just to talk to her. So, what can I do for you, Mr. Baker? She hoped she sounded more professional than she felt that. Well, Miss Wilkes, I heard you were given a special assignment this weekend. Oh, you did? How did you hear that? You know. I hear things. Our friends talk. Are they our friends now? She teased Dot. I think so. I mean, if that's all right with you. Sure, I think everybody likes having you join our group. So anyway, I just dropped Michaela off at Josie's house for the morning. 
I have something I wanted to drop by if you're at the school now. Her cheeks flushed at the thought of him stopping by to see her. She wondered if she should say no, he couldn't. But she didn't want to do that. Sure, she heard herself say before she could stop herself. Great. I'll see you in a few. Michaela dropped her phone and purse on a nearby table. She smoothed her hands over her Heritage Academy t-shirt before grabbing her phone. She switched on the selfie camera and looked at herself. Thankfully, she had applied light makeup this morning, but her curls were piled on her head in a messy bun. For a second, she wished she had put in a little more effort. Then she shrugged and put her phone down. A friend was allowed to see her looking like this on a Saturday morning. And that's all she and Ryan were, friends. She hoped she could remember that. A sound behind her caused her to turn. Why did he have to look so good standing there with a coffee cup in one hand and a paper bag in the other? Hey, she said, hoping she didn't sound as nervous as she felt. Good morning. He smiled. What's that? She pointed to the bag. Ryan lifted the bag up. This? He grinned. This is breakfast. You brought me breakfast? Well, that's not what I stopped by to give you. But I decided it was early enough that if I was coming by, I should bring coffee and muffins. Coffee and muffins sound great. Here. He held out the bag to her. But I do have something else too. Oh. Michaela tilted her head as her eyebrows went up. She watched as Ryan grinned, as if he had a secret. It was so adorable she wanted to wrap her arms around him. He stepped to the door and brought out a gift bag. His eyes twinkled as he handed it to her. What's this for? It wasn't her birthday or any sort of special occasion. Just something I thought you could use. Michaela opened the bag and reached inside. She pulled out a small black contraption. She had to turn it over a few times to figure out what it was. A label maker? Her mouth fell open in surprise. Ryan stepped close and put his hand on the device. His fingers brushed hers and it sent excitement up her arm. I thought it would help today. I know how many labels you wrote for that one shelf before. It's perfect, thank you. Ryan met her gaze and held it. He seemed to pause for a long moment before he spoke again. I thought maybe I could help too. Really? Michaela spoke barely above a whisper. Did she dare take him up on that offer? Sure. Nor is it Josie's and I have some time. This is too big of a job for one person. I don't think you signed up to volunteer for that. I didn't have to. I'm happy to help you any time. Michaela's heart pounded out a funny rhythm. His face was so serious, but warm and comfortable. She didn't mind him being here with her. She wouldn't mind being with him all the time. If you're sure. I know there will be some lifting to do. He smiled. Put me to work. Will do. Right after I finish this muffin. She reached for the bag. Inside she found two blueberry muffins, she took one and handed the other to Ryan. He accepted the bag and they ate in silence for a few moments. Michaela wished she could think of something to say, but her mind had gone blank. Before it had seemed easy to talk with him. Now that he was here and they were alone, she wasn't sure what to talk about. Ryan finished first and brushed his hands off. Where should we start? She pushed the last bite of muffin into her mouth and chewed as fast as she could. She pointed to the first shelves. Might as well start at the beginning. Right. A very good place to start. I brought my wireless speaker. Do you mind if I turn on some music? Not at all. Ryan turned and looked over the shelf she had pointed to. Michaela turned on her speaker and started a playlist of her favorite songs. She made her way over to where Ryan stood. If our experience with the shelves upstairs is any indication, there's no telling what's in these boxes. We should just jump in and see what we find. Ryan nodded and lifted a box off the shelf. 
Michaela did the same, and they quickly fell into a rhythm. The label maker got a workout as they opened each box, scanned the contents, and gave it a category. As they listed different holidays, events, and school's activities, they placed boxes into different piles. So, you like country music? Ryan asked. Huh? Michaela lifted her head from the box of Valentine's decorations. He pointed to the speaker. Country music? Oh, right. She laughed. I do live in Tennessee after all. Ryan nodded. I think it's a rule. My parents raised me on the classics. Mine too. When I was six, I told everyone my favorite song was Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. Michaela laughed, and it echoed from the second floor ceiling. I think when I was six my favorite song was Jesus Loves Me. Not a bad choice. He smiled. So you grew up in church? Michaela nodded as she placed a label on the box. All my life. My dad was a deacon, and my mom ran the women's ministry. You know how people say they're at church any time the door is open? Well, we had keys. Ryan laughed. Sounds like me. We went to a small church, and I was there from the time I was in the nursery. It was good to grow up with a solid faith. Michaela nodded. It's not just my parents though. I know plenty of people whose parents took them to church, but they don't follow the Lord. It's important to me that my faith is my own, and not just because it's part of my childhood. Ryan seemed to take that in. I understand that. It took me a long time to figure that out. I made a decision to follow Jesus in high school, and I think it was real. But after that, I didn't have many struggles where I felt like I really had to trust God for my everyday life. Sure, I wanted to be saved, but I didn't have big problems that I needed him to help me with. He paused and let out a sigh. Then after my wife left, everything fell apart. I wanted to trust God to get me through it, but it was hard. When I finally hit rock bottom, I had to tell him I couldn't do this on my own. If I was going to be a single dad to Nora, I needed his strength. I know for sure that's the only thing that has gotten me through. Michaela reached out and squeezed his arm. I'm glad we can lean on God. She let go of him and immediately missed the warmth from his touch. He stared at his arm where her hand had been before looking up. When we moved here, I spent a lot of time in prayer and Bible study on my own. But I had never been to church other than the one where I grew up. I was terrified to find a new place to fit in. But I knew I wanted Nora to grow up in church. So we started going on Sundays, but we never really got connected. I didn't make friends or build community. Honestly, I thought we would just keep doing that. Then that Sunday morning I woke up and knew it was time to try a new church. It was like I heard God speak to me and say, today is the day. Michaela sucked in a breath. There it was. The same phrase she had heard God speak to her when she saw Ryan at church. That couldn't be a mistake. God was telling her something. Something big. She swallowed to push down the emotion building in her chest. So you like the new church then? A smile broke wide across his face. Absolutely. I can't explain it, it's like it was just what we've always needed. I'm only sorry we didn't look sooner. Then again, maybe that was just the right timing. Timing is important, Michaela agreed. Too bad the timing of their meeting was the worst. Why couldn't they meet before Nora was in her class? Or after? Inwardly, she sighed. Would he still be around when Nora wasn't in her class anymore? As if he could read her thoughts, Ryan changed the subject. I read the school handbook. She almost dropped the box she had lifted off the shelf. Managing to set it down, she looked up at him. You did? He nodded. I wanted to know the policy on teachers dating parents of students. You did? She repeated. Ryan stood and stuffed his hands in his pockets. Yes, I did. I didn't think I would be interested in dating anyone. Nora is my whole life. Everything I do is for her. 
so I didn't have any plans for that, and I definitely wasn't looking for anyone. He paused and took a breath. But there is something between us. I feel it every time I'm near you. It's hard to ignore. Michaela bit her lip and only slightly nodded. Ryan carefully watched her reaction. The connection between them was so strong, surely she felt it too. But what if she didn't? She was quiet for a long moment, and his worst fears rose to the surface. He dropped his gaze to the floor and took a step back. I'm sorry, he said. If I misunderstood, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make things awkward. No, you didn't. What you said was true. She stepped toward him and seemed like she might reach out for him. Instead, she folded her arms across her chest. I feel it too. It's just that, dot while you read the handbook. The policy is pretty clear. Right. Ryan sighed. So what do we do? Michaela shrugged. Disappointed filled him. I don't know either. I guess we wait. I guess so. But a lot can change in seven months. You could change your mind by then. That's not going to happen. He reached for her hand and slid his fingers between hers. I would ask you out right now if I could. I would have asked you to come over for dinner and movie night last night with Nora. I'm sure this is something I want. Michaela looked into his eyes and he could have stayed there all day. If only there wasn't a rule against this. He cleared his throat and dropped her hand. But there was, and he knew they needed to honor it. He stepped away. So maybe you'd like to go out with me maybe in June? She smiled. I would like that. He would like that too. Only not as much as he would like taking her in his arms right then. Chapter 19 Daddy, can I have more pizza? Nora asked. Ryan teased her with a wide-eyed stare. More? You want more? What is that, your fifth piece? The little girl giggled. No, only my second. Wow, you must be growing. When was the last time we measured you? He pointed to the place on the kitchen doorframe where they had marked her height since they moved into this house. The week before school started. That's right. He could hardly believe how the weeks had gone by since then. In some ways, it seemed like a different lifetime. Then, Nora had been nervous about starting school and he was worried she wouldn't make any real friends. And now? She had spent the day at Josie's house, something she had never done before. When he dropped her off, he sat in front of the house, wondering if this was all real. Nora had a friend, she was happy in her class. Ryan had friends too, and a church community that he was beginning to feel a part of. Nora loved her teacher. Ryan knew he had feelings for her too, but he needed to put them aside. As he watched Nora dig into another slice of pizza, he wondered what it would be like for Michaela to be with him now. Would she be the one to measure Nora's growth? Would she insist they have a salad or vegetables to go along with their usual Friday night fare, or would she bring out the ice cream for dessert? He was still thinking about Michaela when Nora picked out the movie and snuggled up next to him on the couch. He ached to have Michaela there with them. But what would Nora think? As if she read his mind, Nora spoke up. Daddy, do you think Miss Wilkes likes princess movies? Ryan tried to keep his voice normal. I don't know. What made you ask that? Yesterday when we went around and said what we were looking forward to this weekend, I said pizza and movie night. Miss Wilkes said she loves pizza and movie night too. I just wondered what kind of movie she would pick. Do you think we could invite her over for movie night sometime? Ryan stared at her, a quiet sigh escaping his lips. How he wished they could invite her. He wanted to have her here for movie night every week. He kissed the top of Nora's head. Maybe someday, he said. Now, let's get this movie started. Sunday morning, Ryan dropped Nora off in her class and headed down the hallway. He stopped in the fellowship hall where they had coffee and muffins out on a table and helped himself. 
The children's classes started earlier than the adult class, so he had some time before he needed to get to his own room. Ryan, right? A man's voice said. He turned to see the pastor beside him and reached out to shake his hand. Yes, sir. Ryan Baker. I'm Brother Kent, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I didn't mean to startle you. Travis Wright mentioned you've been coming to the men's group on Wednesday nights, and I wanted to introduce myself. Ryan nodded. I've been there several weeks now. We're really enjoying the church. Is your family here? Just me and my daughter, Nora, she's six. She's in the children's ministry now. Wonderful. We're glad to have you guys. Do you have a few minutes to talk? I'm headed to my office to look over my sermon notes, but I'd love to walk and talk if you'd like. Sure. Ryan nodded and picked up his coffee from the table. Great. The pastor led the way and kept up the conversation. Are you guys new to the area? Ryan shook his head. No, we've been here a few years. We attended a different church, but only on Sunday mornings. I was really looking for something where we could get more involved. I see. We're happy to help you get plugged in. But it seems like you're doing a pretty good job of that yourself. Ryan smiled. I like to think I'm a self-starter. It took me a while to figure out this was what we needed, but once I did, I wanted to jump in with both feet. By then they had made it to the office, and Brother Kent pointed to the chair across from his desk. Have a seat. He took a moment to find a stack of papers on the shelf and then sat in his own chair. But you didn't grow up here, is that right? No. I'm originally from Crossville. What brought you to Twin Creeks? Ryan sighed. I was looking for a fresh start. I like small towns, but when everybody knows your business, sometimes you need to get out and find your own place. Brother Kent nodded. I can understand that. Ryan felt a nudge to tell the pastor his story. My life has been a little complicated over the last few years. I got married young, and we had Nora right away. He swallowed to push the emotion down, but even as he did, he felt the pain was changing. It was a little easier to tell the story. He didn't feel as angry as before, he only wished Nora had a mother who loved her. My wife left when Nora was a baby. She didn't want to be a mother at a young age and said she had more of her own life to live. Pastor Kent blinked but managed to keep from showing the shock he must feel. He slowly nodded. I imagine that was very hard for you. It hurts us when people make decisions for themselves that affect others so deeply. It did hurt. A lot. Once I got over the initial shock, I was just so angry. How could she be so selfish, and how could she leave me to do that alone? But now my concern is for my daughter. She never even knew her mother, but she's old enough now to understand that she's out there in the world somewhere and she doesn't even care about her daughter. Have you talked with her about this? Ryan shook his head. She doesn't ask many questions about her mom. But I feel like she will, and what am I going to say? Brother Kent looked thoughtful for a moment. I'm sorry you went through that. And I can't imagine how hard that will be for Nora. Being abandoned by a parent is something that stays with you. I think the best thing to say to her is that you love her and want to always be there for her, but even more importantly, she has a heavenly father who will never abandon her. His is the perfect love we can never lose. The words hit Ryan in the gut. He put his hand to his chest as if that could stop it from pounding so hard. Clearing his throat, he tried to speak, but his voice filled with emotion. You're right. But I think I'm the one who needed to hear that. Brother Kent smiled. We all need to hear that. Ryan nodded. I want Nora to know she's loved, by me, but by God too. He paused and thought about what he always wished for her. I can't stop thinking that she needs a mom. Brother Kent's eyebrows shot up. Do you have someone in mind? Ryan pressed his lips together. Could he be honest about that? For a long time, I said I wouldn't be with anybody else. 
it hurt too much to lose the person I thought I would be with forever. Then I thought maybe I could, just for Nora. But now that I've met someone, I feel like maybe I could open my heart again. He sighed. But we can't date. Oh. Brother Kent leaned forward, as if he was intrigued. Why not? Do you know Michaela Wilkes? His face lit up. Yes, of course. Ryan nodded. She's my daughter's teacher. Oh. Brother Kent stared straight ahead and rubbed his chin. Well, that's an interesting situation. Ryan sank back into the chair, feeling the defeat of that statement. No kidding. I'm assuming that's not allowed. According to the school handbook, dating between a teacher and one of their students' parents is clearly not allowed. But you like her? Ryan let the question sink in. Like her? He knew he liked her, but was that really enough to describe it? I could say yes, but that sounds like it's just a crush. The truth is, I'm falling for her and I don't know how to stop. Brother Kent smiled. Maybe you're not supposed to. But nothing can happen right now. I understand that. And I'm not suggesting you go against the school rules. You wouldn't want to get Michaela in trouble or cause problems for your daughter. One of the most valuable things I've seen in relationships is prayer. And you can pray for her without dating her. You can pray for God's will in your relationship and ask him how to prepare for the future. Ryan considered this. That seems a little serious when we haven't even been on a date. Are you serious about her? He didn't have to think about the answer. Yes. Brother Kent nodded. Then pray. Chapter 20 Michaela prayed for Ryan every day. She couldn't say when she had started, although maybe it had morphed from praying for Nora, the quiet little girl in her class, to praying for both of them. Tuesday afternoon, she found herself praying for him as she cleaned off her desk after school. God, she whispered. Show me how to do this. I know you said this was what you have for me, but I also know we can't be together now. She shook her head. Part of her wanted to wish that she hadn't met Ryan while Nora was in her class, but she knew she couldn't do that. Nora was a blessing in her life, and she was thankful for the chance to be her teacher. And if she wasn't in her class, things wouldn't have started as they had. No, she wouldn't wish for that. Still, her heart ached to be with them. Their brief time together at the trail had been a glimpse into what it might be like to share life with both of them. A folded piece of paper on the corner of her desk caught her eye. She unfolded it and saw that it said, to Miss Wilkes from Nora, in pink crayon. When she opened it, the drawing inside made her almost drop the paper. She pressed her hand to her chest as she stared. Drawn in a crayon outline were three people. A man, a little girl, and a woman dot. Michaela dropped into her desk chair and stared at it for several moments in silence. God, I don't think this is a mistake. I don't understand the timing, but I know you have a plan. I care for Ryan. He's a wonderful man and a great dad. I want to get to know him better but I already know I'm falling for him. Lord, show us what to do. She paused and let out the breath she didn't realize she was holding. Lord, be with Nora. I don't know if she realizes what she's saying with this picture. I already love her as my student, but Lord, I pray that you would allow her to be so much more in my life. Michaela felt at peace as she finished up her workday. She packed up her things like she had always done and headed out the door. She wondered if there would be a time when she would head home to someone else. What would it be like to take care of a house and family? Would she be the kind of mom and wife who meal prepped for the whole week? She'd never done that before. Since it was just her, it wasn't hard to decide what to eat based on what she felt like that day. Michaela could get used to the idea of changing her ways to include a family. Asterisk 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 Saturday afternoon, Michaela was bored. She had caught up on her lesson plans, her laundry, and had even attempted a menu plan for the following week. Now all that was done, she found herself scrolling through a list of movies to pick something to watch, but nothing was catching her interest. Just then, her phone dinged. 
She glanced at the phone to see a message from Ally want to go see a movie? Yes. Michaela replied, even as she wondered if Ally knew she was sitting around doing nothing. Great. Meet us at the theater, movie at four. Michaela checked her watch to see that wasn't too long from now. Luckily, she did extra time and had already dressed and fixed her hair and makeup. So there was nothing else to do. She pulled up to the theater at 3.30. As she was walking to the ticket booth, a familiar voice called out. Miss Wilkes. Nora. Michaela felt as if her heart might burst when the girl came running for a hug. Are you going to see a movie? Nora asked. Michaela nodded. I'm meeting some friends. She bit her lip as she looked at Ryan standing behind the little girl. Hi. Hi. Ryan's smile made her heart do a flip-flop. Jackson texted and said y'all were going to a movie. He asked if I wanted to come, but I couldn't leave Nora today. He left. But she saw the text and asked if we could go see a movie, so I agreed. What are you going to see? Michaela asked. Ryan tapped the movie poster on the wall of the theater for the latest cartoon movie. I don't think Jackson and Cole would be interested in that one. Michaela laughed. Probably not. Hey. Ally called out as she and Emily joined them on the sidewalk with the guys close behind. Michaela turned to hug both of her friends. Hey, Ryan was just telling me he and Nora are going to see a movie too. Do you want to come with us? Nora asked, her eyes hopeful as she pleaded. Oh, well, I. Michaela lifted her eyes to Ryan. Nora, honey, Miss Wilkes is going to see another movie. Oh, it's all right. Ally jumped in. We could go see whatever Nora wants. Ryan looked doubtful. I don't think it's your speed. I certainly don't mind. Emily said. Besides, Jackson and Cole want to go see their own movie. So us girls could go with Nora. Yes. Ally said. And if you want to go with the boys, you could. We could take Nora if you want. Or you can come too. Michaela watched as Ryan looked from Nora to Cole and Jackson and finally to her. He didn't look away when he said. I'll be happy to see the cartoon. Yay. Nora jumped up and down. Before Michaela knew it, Nora had taken her hand in her right and Ryan's hand in the other and the three of them were walking towards the ticket booth. A short while later, Michaela was seated in the theater. Ally and Emily were on her left, and Nora was in the seat to her right, with Ryan on the other side. She couldn't stop smiling. Nora chatted about the movie and how she had been wanting to see it for a few weeks. Michaela had only heard a little about it, but Nora was happy to explain what she already knew about the film. Michaela could have listened to her talk about anything. And every once in a while, she could look over at Ryan and see his calm, comfortable smile. Inwardly, Michaela felt a deep, happy sigh. This was where she wanted to be. These were the people she wanted to spend her time with. So why did it have to feel so hard? And even though she hadn't planned it, she still felt a little bit of guilt over the situation. Was it wrong to be here with them? As the preview started, Michaela told herself not to worry. She was at a movie with her friends. One friend just happened to be a guy who had brought his daughter. She stole a quick glance to remind herself that it was a very handsome man who was dangerously close to her when he tucked his arm behind his daughter. She settled in and enjoyed the movie. Nora giggled through the film, and the adults found themselves laughing too, especially at the jokes that would go over the children's heads. Michaela had to admit that the film was well done and she was drawn into the story. She forced herself to let go of her worrying. When they walked out of the theater together, they were still laughing, and Michaela didn't know when the smile on her face might fade. Today had been a good day, and with Nora and Ryan walking beside her, she didn't want it to end. Chapter 21 Tuesday afternoon, Michaela had to work not to chew her lip as she walked through the office doors. Her smile from the weekend had no place here. Mrs. Holloway nodded when Michaela entered. Shut the door please, Miss Wilkes. 
Michaela did as she was asked and took a seat. She tried to sit up straight and gripped her fingers together so she wouldn't fidget. I'm sorry to have to call you into the office, but I've heard a few comments about you, and I want to set the record straight. Yes, ma'am. A fellow teacher said she happened to see you at the movies with a man and a young girl. She said she didn't think much of it, since she didn't recognize them. Until she heard the girl on the playground today telling a classmate that she went to see a movie with Miss Wilkes. Michaela told herself to breathe. Her chest constricted and her palms were sweating. Yes, I can explain about that. I hope so. Michaela swallowed hard. Well, Nora's father is friends with my two best friends' husbands. We all go to church together, and we spend time together as a group. So the girls were going to go see a movie on Saturday, and the guys were going to a different movie. Re, Dudham, Mr. Baker was invited to go with the guys, but he couldn't leave Nora, so they decided to go to a movie. Then the girls decided to go to the same movie. She forced herself to take a breath when she realized she had blurted all the information without stopping. Dot. So you didn't make plans to go to the movie with Mr. Baker? Michaela shook her head, glad that this was the truth. No, I didn't. Mrs. Holloway gave her a long, hard look. Miss Wilkes, I don't think I need to remind you about our teacher and parent dating policy. No, ma'am. We have this rule so that there isn't any partiality with a student. And even though your motives might have been fine, it's still not fair for one student in your class to hear that you spent Saturday afternoon with another student. Michaela nodded, her mind racing at what was happening. At Heritage Academy, we are a family. We want our students to feel welcome and included, and we don't want to single out one person in our classrooms to get special treatment. I understand. Miss Wilkes, I'm sorry to have to say this. But you need to consider your actions, and if there is something more to this than him being your best friend's husband's friend, then we need to have a discussion about what that means for your future at Heritage. Michaela nodded again, but she didn't know what to say. Mrs. Holloway gave one quick nod, as if that meant the situation was resolved. I'm sure you will use wisdom and good judgment, as we expect from all our teachers and staff at Heritage. Yes, ma'am. Michaela took that as her cue and stood to leave. All the way down the hall back to her classroom, her mind raced. What had she done? Hadn't she known she shouldn't have been so happy sitting next to them at the theater? Part of her wished she had told Nora that they shouldn't tell anyone, but that it felt like it would be an admission of her guilt. Still, she would have to talk to Ryan. Michaela was Nora's teacher, and that had to come first right now. Her job had to come first, didn't it? As much as she wanted to be friends with him, they would have to steer clear of each other. That was the only logical solution. The problem was, Michaela really didn't want to be logical right now. Asterisk 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 Ryan felt a sense of doom as he knocked on Jackson and Ally's front door. He hadn't been able to shake the feeling since Michaela had called and asked him to meet her there that evening. When he asked if everything was all right, she said it was, but he wasn't sure he believed her. Ally answered the door with a smile, but she seemed worried. Come on in, Ryan. Thanks, he said, his voice low. Is. Ally spoke before he could finish. Michaela's in the dining room. Jackson and I will just be out back. She pointed, and Ryan followed with his eyes. He cleared his throat as he walked through the doorway and found Michaela sitting at the dining room table. She had her hands folded in front of her. Her knuckles were white as she gripped them. Hey, she said quietly. Thanks for coming. Of course. I hope everything is all right. Michaela took a deep breath and blew it out. Actually, it's not. Ryan took the seat across from her as fear gripped his heart. Okay. Let's talk about it. I'm sure we can work this out. Her eyes met his, and he saw the sadness there. Ryan, that's the problem. There can't be a we. Her words hit him right in the chest. It took the wind out of him and he couldn't speak. I know there's not really anything going on, not officially, but we can't spend time together. 
Ryan folded his hands on the table and tried to stay calm. What happened? Michaela bit her lip. I got called into the office today for a meeting with the administrator. Another teacher saw us at the theater and heard Nora tell someone that she went to a movie with Miss Wilkes. Ryan dropped his face into his hands. I'm sorry. I should have told her not to tell anyone. No, Michaela shook her head. I don't want her to have to keep a secret or think she was doing something wrong. That's not fair to her. We just shouldn't have done it. Ryan worked his jaw as he tried to formulate a response. We didn't do anything wrong either. Michaela tapped her fingers on the table. Maybe not. But there is a rule. And if we look like we're breaking it, maybe we're too close to the line. Ryan couldn't take it anymore. He stood and made his way around the table to the chair next to her. Before he could tell himself not to, he dropped into the chair and took her hands in his. Michaela. He waited until her eyes met his. She looked a little worried, but mostly relieved. He smiled. Michaela, I have feelings for you. Big feelings. I can't pretend I don't. So if there's a line, maybe we are too close. But if there wasn't a rule, I would already have asked you out. I would already have invited you to the movies with me and Nora. I know I can't do that. But if you show up at the same theater at the same time, I'm not going to avoid you. And I'm not going to miss the opportunity to sit next to you. Michaela sucked in a breath. But that's what I'm talking about. If I had met you somewhere besides school and you had asked me out, I would have said yes. She looked down at the table for just a moment and Ryan watched as a blush spread across her cheeks. It made her even more endearing. I have feelings for you too. Ryan squeezed her hand and waited for her to say more, but she didn't. Instead, she held his gaze and Ryan found himself lost in her eyes. He inched closer until their noses touched. Michaela, he whispered. Ryan, she whispered back as her eyes slid closed. He captured her mouth with his. Gently, but firmly. It was as if she was a memory he'd always held in his heart, but it was happening here and now. He dropped her hands and reached for her, cradling the back of her head as his fingers made their way into her curls. They were even softer than he'd imagined. When she pressed her hands to his chest, he felt like he might explode. He let out a sigh as he pulled back to look at her. I wondered what that would be like, Michaela said, reaching up to touch her lips. She looked away from him. But now that I know, it might be worse. Ryan's heart broke as he understood her words. There's nothing we can do? Michaela shook her head. I don't want to ruin Nora's year. She's doing so well in class and has made friends. If there was something between us, they could make her change classes, or worse, I could get fired. Ryan gripped both her hands again. I don't want that. She bit her lip. There's nothing to do but not see each other. I don't want that either. I know. But I don't think we have a choice. Mrs. Holloway made it very clear that the rules are the rules, and that being seen together is unwise. How far away is the end of the school year? Michaela smiled, and it gave him a ray of hope. We have two weeks until Christmas break. We have almost six months. Ryan considered this. I guess we don't have much choice. Unfortunately, I don't think so. Ryan sighed. Until then. He closed the distance and pressed his lips to hers. She was right that it might be more painful, but he needed this to last him a while. He felt her arms go around his neck and wrapped his own around her waist. He breathed her in as he kissed her as long as he dared. He couldn't bear to look at her when she pulled away. Reaching for her hand, he squeezed it before just briefly looking to her face. See you soon, Michaela. Soon, she whispered. Ryan stood and walked from the house. His feet were as heavy as bricks, and his heart was worse. How could he stay away from her when everything in her called out to him? God, he whispered as he climbed into his car. Please make a way. Chapter 22
Michaela looked around her classroom, empty of children. The last two weeks before Christmas break always flew by with parties, seasonal activities, programs, and the last day of school where students wore pajamas and watched a Christmas movie. But the days seemed to drag on for Michaela. School kept her busy, but at night, going home to her empty apartment left her feeling more lonely than usual. Seeing Nora at school was both joyful and difficult. Michaela loved the hug she got from the little girl every day, but it caused an ache she hadn't known was possible. She wanted to hold on to hope that she and Ryan could be together in the future and that Nora would always be in her life. But six months was a long time. Anything could happen. Ryan said he would be waiting for her, but they had no commitment between them. They couldn't. And could she really expect someone she'd only know for a few months to wait that long just to ask her out? Sitting at her desk, she pressed her fingertips to her lips, remembering the kiss. Memory was all she had for now, and she could almost feel him next to her. He must feel it too. Please God, make a way. She whispered the prayer that was always in her heart. Dot. She would hold on to it as she packed up the next day to visit her parents for Christmas. It had been years since she'd stayed with them for more than a few days. She had decided to spend all of her break in her hometown. In years past, it had seemed to hold too many memories of things she wanted to forget. Now it felt like an escape from wondering where Ryan was every day and if she might bump into him in town. She hadn't. Not since the day at Ally and Jackson's house. It was hard to say if that was better or worse. Seeing him might be a relief, but it would also make her desperate to fall into his arms. No, it was better this way. She would leave for her parents' house and see Twin Creeks in the new year. It wouldn't be any different after Christmas, but more time would have passed. Asterisk 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 Michaela, this one has your name on it, Mom said. That's from us, called out Kennedy, Michaela's older sister who was wrangling her two sons. Thanks. Michaela smiled as she pulled the wrapping paper off the box. She lifted out a soft pink cardigan sweater. Oh, how lovely, Mom said. I was hoping to add some color to your wardrobe, Kennedy said. Even if it did have to be a teacher's cardigan so you would actually wear it. Michaela scrunched her nose. I wear other things. Do you? Kennedy tilted her head and pointed at her sister. Michaela glanced down at her dark jeans and red Christmas shirt, covered with a black cardigan. Maybe Kennedy was right. She shrugged. It's comfortable. Kennedy sat down next to her and nudged her shoulder. You're adorable, and I love that you're comfortable with who you are. Michaela knew it was meant as a compliment, but it only made her feel boring. Too bad her sister didn't know about her almost against the rules relationship. She was too afraid to say anything about it out loud. Thank you for the sweater, she said. I love it. We love you too, Kennedy said. The boys love their airplanes. She pointed to her four- and six-year-old kids who were testing out the styrofoam airplanes. They can do tricks and everything. Michaela grinned. But I think that's probably best saved for outside. Kennedy nodded, her eyes wide. I agree. We'll leave that up to their dad. She motioned to her husband sitting on the other couch. I'm glad they like them, Michaela said. Of course they do. You always pick out the best gift. Just keeping up that title of best and ever. I do try. Kennedy lowered her voice as she looked Michaela in the eyes. You're so great with kids. All kids. She sighed. I just wish. Don't say it. Michaela held her hand up. She didn't want to hear how her sister wished she had kids of her own right now. Okay, okay. But you know how I feel. Yes, I do, but some things are out of my control. Michaela frowned. Dot. I know. And I haven't forgotten how hard it was when, but well, you know. But I don't want you to close yourself off either. Not everyone is like him. Michaela nodded. She knew all of that. And she knew not everyone was like her ex Ryan was a good man, but she couldn't be with him right now. Dot. 
Is there anyone? Michaela thought about how to answer truthfully. She reached out and squeezed her sister's hand. There is the hope of someone. Asterisk 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 Ryan watched Nora as she opened another Christmas present. This was the big one. He had rolled the object out with a giant plastic bag over it. Now Nora ripped it back. A bike. She yelled. Jumping up and down, she almost knocked it over. Oh, thank you daddy, thank you. Ryan's voice cracked with emotion. You're welcome, sweetie. Do you like it? Nora ran her hand along the handlebars with pink and purple sparklers. It's just what I wanted. It even has the basket on the front. I think we need to try it out. He stood and walked toward the door. Right now? Nora asked. Of course. Let's go. Nora giggled as they made their way outside while she was in pajamas. Ryan picked up the helmet he had hidden under the tree and helped Nora move the bike out the front door and down to the driveway. Don't let me go, Nora said as she climbed on the bike. Ryan promised and put his hand behind her on the seat. He ran alongside as Nora pedaled. It took a few tries, but Nora got her balance. He stayed close but pulled his hand back to watch her go dot. I'm doing it, Daddy. I'm riding. Go, Nora, go. He called out as he let her get some distance, but kept an eye on her. In that moment, his heart felt heavy for the hundredth time that day. Michaela should be here. Ryan couldn't push away his desire. There was nothing he could do about it, but it was there all the same. He knew he wanted to be with her, and every moment with Nora made him realize it more. He loved being with his daughter, but he'd seen the light in her eyes since they met Michaela. The same light was in his heart. Nora made a sharp turn and lost her balance, but caught herself on her foot. She smiled when she stood up. I'm okay. Let's do it again. Ryan made his way to her. Nora beamed. Daddy, I can't wait to tell Miss Wilkes. Ryan's heart thudded at the name and he had to clear his throat. I'm sure she'll be happy to hear about it. Nora's head bobbed up and down. I told her I wanted a bike for Christmas. And what did she say, he asked. Nora had no idea how desperate he was to hear every story she told about her teacher. She said she hoped I got everything I was wishing for on Christmas. Ryan smiled. Of course she did. Michaela put everyone before herself and wanted the best for them. Was she getting what she wanted for Christmas? He hadn't seen her since they agreed to put distance between them, so his only clues about her life came from Nora. She told him Miss Wilkes was going to Hope's Bluff for Christmas. It hurt to think of her being that far away. Daddy? Nora said. Yes, sweetie? Does Miss Wilkes have her own family? She has her parents, that must be who she went to visit. Nora scrunched up her face. No, that's not what I mean. Does she have a husband or kids? Ryan watched Nora's expression as he shook his head. No, she doesn't. That's too bad. Oh. Ryan waited to hear where she was going with that. Nora nodded. She would make a good mom. Ryan swallowed to push down the emotion that thought brought with it. He began to push Nora and watched as she balanced and stayed up on her own. Forcing a smile, he cheered for her. He was thrilled to watch her, but the pain that someone else should be here watching too was overwhelming. He whispered the prayer that was always in his heart. God, please make a way. Something inside his soul stirred. The words echoed in his heart. You don't have to date her. At first it felt like a stab to the heart. He wanted to date Michaela. He wanted to be with her more than anything. But as he stood watching his daughter, his thoughts went a step further. He didn't just want to date her. He wanted her in his life and in his daughter's life. He had never been looking for a girlfriend, and maybe Michaela was supposed to be more than that. A thought came to him, and his mouth dropped open as he stood frozen in the street. That's crazy, he said out loud to no one but himself. Isn't it? 
He lifted his eyes to the sky as if he expected God to give him the answer. God, I don't know if this is what you want or not. I need you to show me. Whatever your plan is, please, make a way. He knew the idea in his mind was a giant leap. And he knew it was all he would be able to think about until he knew for sure. Chapter 23 Michaela dropped her bags on the floor of her apartment before she hurried to turn up the thermostat. The place was cold and smelled stale after being closed up for over a week. Once the heat was going, she lit a Christmas candle and placed it on the mantel. The holiday might be over, but there were no other signs of Christmas here. She hadn't decorated for just herself. She sighed as she sat on the couch and looked around. The drive back to Twin Creeks had been fairly uneventful. Now that she was home, she expected to feel relieved to be back in her own space. Instead, she had never felt more alone. Christmas had been nice with her family. It was a bustle of activity from the moment she arrived at her parents' house. Her nephews rushing from one thing to the next full of endless energy, Michaela had been delighted and entertained for hours. Sadness washed over her as she remembered watching the kids open their presents alongside their mom and dad. Michaela had tried to push thoughts of Ryan and Nora from her mind, but it was just too easy to wonder what it would be like to spend Christmas with them. It was early still, and her stomach grumbled from the fast food she had eaten for lunch. Ally had invited her to go out with everyone for dinner when she got back, but she felt too guilty to go if Ryan hadn't been invited because of her. She used the excuse that she might be too tired after her drive. The truth was, she wasn't tired, just lonely. When Claire called and suggested they meet for dinner, she didn't pass up the opportunity. It would be good to talk with a friend. When she pulled into the restaurant parking lot, she looked around for Claire's car. She didn't see it but decided to go in and get a table. It had surprised her when Claire suggested this place. She felt sure Claire had mentioned that she didn't like that particular restaurant, but Michaela did, so she didn't argue. Table for two, please, she said to the hostess. Name? Michaela. The hostess raised her eyebrows. We have a reservation for you. I'll show you to the table. A reservation? Maybe the restaurants had been busier during the holidays and Claire had thought to call ahead. The hostess led her through the dining room and out to the back patio where they had a covered area with heaters during the cold months. Michaela loved the look of the twinkle lights but wasn't sure she wanted to sit outside. When the hostess opened the door and stood back, Michaela opened her mouth to ask for a table inside. The hostess held up a hand and then pointed out the door. Michaela took two steps forward to peer out and gasped. Ryan. The word escaped in a whisper that was more like a breath. Her heart leapt in a desire to run to him, but she told herself to stop. What are you doing here? I'm here to see you, he said, standing to make his way to her. She glanced behind to see that the hostess had disappeared. A quick look told her they were alone on the patio. Ryan held out his arms, and before she could stop herself, she stepped into his embrace. With his arms around her, she felt like she could breathe for the first time in weeks. I've missed you, he whispered against her ear. Dot. She squeezed her eyes shut. You have no idea. He laughed. I think I do, but it's not a competition. Michaela grinned. You're right. Panic rose in her chest as she looked into his eyes. But we can't be here. We can't do this. Ryan's eyes were serious. I know we can't date. The policy says so. And I appreciate that you want to follow the rules, and that you didn't even consider asking to have Nora move to a different class. You put her needs before what you wanted. Nora loves you, and she could never ask for a better teacher. Michaela's eyes filled with tears. I'm the lucky one. Nora is a special girl. Ryan took Michaela's hands in hers. Nora isn't the only one who has fallen in love with you. Michaela took in a quick breath. She couldn't look away from him. I was taken with you the first night in your class. I saw how you captured the attention of your students from the start, and I couldn't get you out of my mind. 
I didn't know I would want to date anyone, and I definitely never planned to fall for the one woman I wasn't allowed to date. I realized something at Christmas. I don't want to date you. Michaela's eyebrows shot up, and for a moment she thought her fears were coming true. You don't? He slowly shook his head. Dating you would never be enough. Her heart picked up speed as she realized what he was saying. I want you in my life, Michaela. Mine and Nora's. But not as someone I'm dating, or as a girlfriend. What I feel for you is already past that. I want you with us always. For holidays, and morning breakfast, and movie nights on Fridays. I want you to be the one that sits with me and Nora in church, and I don't want to hide my feelings for you. I love you, Michaela. I love you too, Ryan. I think I've known that for a long time. And I want to be with you too. And Nora. I don't want to wait, he said. Not seeing you on Christmas was awful. I don't want to spend another day, hour, and especially not another New Year with you. But since I'm not allowed to date you, I have another idea. Michaela's mind reeled. This couldn't be happening. She covered her mouth with one hand as she watched Ryan drop to his knee. He held onto her other hand as if he would never let her go. Michaela Wilkes, I know I want to spend the rest of my life with you, and I want the rest of my life to start right now. Will you marry me? Their short time of knowing each other flashed through her mind. She cared for him, and for Nora. And yes, maybe she loved him already. But could she do this? I, dot I, a dot I. No other words, came. This was crazy, wasn't it? She forced herself to tell him the truth. I don't know. Ryan's eyes held a touch of disappointment, and he stood, grasping her hands in his. Still, his smile was kind. That's all right. I've been thinking about this a lot and praying non-stop. I didn't know at first either. I'm sure now that this is what I want. But I want you to be sure. She nodded. I just need a little time to think. This is sudden. He pressed a kiss to her forehead. I know. Take whatever time you need. I'll be here. Chapter 24 Michaela stared out the small window in her kitchen. Her coffee cup was growing cold in her hand, but she had only taken a few sips. It had been two days since Ryan had proposed, and she still didn't have her answer. Part of her wished she had said yes in that moment, and not even thought about it. Because she wanted to be with him, didn't she? But people don't just get married. That's crazy. She sighed and gave up on the coffee. Setting it on the counter, she made her way to the living room, to sit. God, she prayed out loud. I don't have any doubt that you brought Ryan into my life. And Nora too. For my whole life, I've wanted to be a wife and a mom. I've watched my friends get married and have children, I've seen other teachers leave the school when their husbands' jobs moved them away, or they wanted to stay home with their kids. She let those words hang in the air for a minute before she prayed again. I love my job. And I want to stay there. I knew I couldn't risk that to date Ryan against the rules. But I never expected this. She sighed. But I have dreamed about marrying him. I've thought about being Nora's mom, and I've pictured us all together as a family. Dot. But what if I still lose my job? What if we do this, and they think we've been dating when we weren't supposed to, or they just don't like that we did this? Would it be worth it then? Michaela grabbed a pillow from the couch as she laid back and hugged it tightly to her chest. The ache was still there. The one she'd felt the day she told Ryan they couldn't see each other. The one she'd carried the rest of the semester at school, and the one that had stayed through the holiday. She missed Ryan. And Nora. Something in her heart seemed to click, and she knew she had her answer. Tears pulled in her eyes, and she didn't bother to brush them away. I want to be with him, she whispered. God, is this your plan for me? Can this really work? A peace washed over her, and all the anxiety she had felt had to move out of the way. I love Ryan, she said. I know it, and he knows it. 
and this is what I want. Asterisk 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 Ryan fingered the small black box in his hand for the hundredth time that hour. He forced himself to set it on the table, since he still wasn't sure if he needed it or not. Michaela had texted to ask if they could talk. He agreed, even though she gave no indication of what she planned to say. Nora was at Josie's house, so he had asked if she could meet him right away. He couldn't stand not knowing what was coming. God, he whispered. Help me to trust you. I know you already know. A knock sounded on the door, and he practically jumped off the couch and sprinted to open it. Hi. When he saw her face, he wanted to pull her inside and wrap her in his arms, but he restrained himself. Come on in. Thanks, she said quietly. A few steps in, she stopped and waited for him to close the door. Ryan watched as she glanced around the open room that held the living room and a view of the kitchen. He had almost forgotten that she had never seen it before. Maybe that was because he'd already imagined her here. He touched her arm as he walked past and led her to the couch. Michaela didn't waste any time. I've been thinking a lot. And praying. And thinking some more. She met his eyes, and the faintest grin touched her lips. He wanted to say that he'd been praying too. Praying for her, and praying that God would give her the answer she needed, but he kept quiet to let her have her say. Dot. Ryan, I've been praying that God would bring the right man into my life for a long time. My friends have tried to set me up with people, or get me to sign up for a dating app, but I never agreed. I knew that in his timing, God would bring him to me, and I didn't have to go out looking. She paused and took a deep breath. Then I met you, and I knew. Maybe not the first time we met, but that day that you came to church for the first time, I knew it was you. Ryan reached out and took her hands in his. I'm so happy to hear you say that. She smiled. But then I was upset. Why would God bring you into my life after I've waited so long, only to realize we couldn't date and I would have to wait more? Ryan nodded in agreement. Dot. I thought we could do it, though. Just wait until the end of the school year. Ryan's heart plummeted. Was she going to say they should keep waiting? He didn't know if he could take it. The last few weeks of school, and the Christmas holidays have been the longest weeks of my life. I've missed you like I never knew I could miss someone. I wanted to talk to you, to see you, to hold your hand. And I've missed Nora too. I miss all my students during the break, but there is something about her. Michaela held his gaze. I've missed you, Ryan. I know that I love you, and that I want to be with you. And I don't want to wait anymore. Ryan felt like he might burst. He closed the distance between them as he wrapped his arms around her and pressed his lips to hers. Relief flooded him as he kissed her. A kiss that spoke of the promise of togetherness and forever. When he pulled back, he saw the tears on her cheeks and reached to brush one away. He cleared his throat to push his own emotions down. Does that mean I can ask you my question again? She smiled, and she nodded. One second, he said. Ryan reached behind her to the table for the box and then knelt in front of her. He laughed. Not everyone gets to do this twice. Michaela laughed too. Her eyes turned serious, but she kept the smile on her face. Michaela Wilkes, I love you. I want to be with you, to grow with you, to know you, to spend my life with you. Will you marry me? Yes, she whispered, but her answer was certain. Ryan slipped the diamond ring on her finger. Then he took her face in both of his hands. He wanted to memorize every detail of her features. He smiled, knowing there would be plenty of time for that. She leaned forward to kiss him, and Ryan melted into her embrace. Chapter 25 Ryan stood at the front of the church with Nora's hand in his. He looked down at his daughter and saw how she beamed. In her sparkly purple dress, she looked even happier than she did the first time she wore it. When Michaela came to the house, they all three sat down on the couch and Ryan told Nora their plan. He had expected her to be completely surprised. Instead, she smiled from ear to ear and said, I've been praying for this. 
Ryan smiled now as he straightened his tie one last time. His black suit would have to do for the occasion. Well, well, well. I guess you took my advice. Pastor Kent came through the back door and made his way over, grinning. See? Prayer works. Ryan laughed. Yes, it does. Thank you for your encouragement. And for making this happen today. Even on a holiday. Of course. What better way to start off a year than joining two people together in a new life? We know this is unusual, so we appreciate you being willing. Pastor Kent squinted his eyes and looked Ryan over. I wouldn't do this for many couples. But the way you spoke to me in my office that day really spoke to me. When you called me the other day, God had laid you on my heart and I'd been praying for you. I knew the Lord was in this, and I needed to honor your request. Are you ready? A voice came from the foyer door. Yes, dear, Pastor Kent said. His wife had agreed to come and be a witness. She had been taking photos of Michaela in the foyer before they began. Let's get in place. Ryan stepped to his spot with Nora at his side. You ready? he asked her. Yes, Daddy. This is so exciting. He nodded in agreement but turned his attention to the foyer doors. He didn't want to miss this. Asterisk 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 Michaela gripped her bouquet tightly as she stood, waiting. She couldn't believe she was standing here now, about to walk down the aisle. With only two days to prepare, she was shocked when she walked into the department store and found the perfect dress. The white dress fell to the floor with the slightest train behind her. It had a high neckline in the front, with a deep V in the back. But her favorite part was the sheer, long sleeves made of lace. Even if she had a year to plan, this was the dress she would wear. They're ready, the pastor's wife said. She lifted her camera to capture the moment. Michaela had known she had done photography in the past, but she hadn't thought much about it. It was just one more gift from the Lord to make their special day perfect. Wait, wait. Don't start yet. Ally called out as she burst into the foyer. Michaela's eyes grew wide. What are you doing here? She watched as Ally, Emily, and both of their husbands rushed through the doors. Ryan told Jackson. Emily said. He tried not to tell us, but we can be a persuasive team. She pointed her thumb between herself and Ally we knew he knew something, and when we found out, we just couldn't miss this. Michaela dabbed a finger at her eyes. Don't make me cry. Ally and Emily ran to wrap their friend in a hug together. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but no one was supposed to know. It's okay. Ally said. We're not mad. But we had to be here. We'll slip in the back and you won't even know we're here. Michaela waved a hand in the air. No, no. No way. You're my bridesmaids. And Jackson and Cole, you go in and be Ryan's groomsmen. He'll be thrilled. Cole and Jackson turned and high-fived each other. Hey. Michaela pointed at them. No fighting over who's the best man. Both of you can just be groomsmen. The two men feigned looks of disappointment but slipped through the doors. Emily laughed. You know them well. Michaela smiled. I don't want to wait any longer. You two go on in so we can get the show on the road. Fine. Just one more thing, Emily said. She squeezed her friend's hand. Michaela, you look absolutely beautiful. I know you've waited to meet your someone for a long time. We all knew it was Ryan the first time we saw you two together. She nodded. This is the right thing. We've all been praying for you. Michaela squeezed back and sniffed. Thank you. Come on now, I said don't make me cry. Okay, okay. Emily said. She and Ally each gave Michaela one more quick hug, then disappeared through the doors. She took one last deep breath, then nodded to the pastor's wife, who opened the door for her. Michaela's heart felt like it would burst. 
She had waited a long time, and she knew God had planned this long ago. She had held on to hope, then held on to God for strength in the waiting. And now she was walking towards the love of her life, with her soon-to-be daughter at his side, and their friends there to support her. As she stepped up and took Ryan's hand, she knew without a doubt that the words echoing in her heart were true. Today is the day. Her smile never wavered throughout the ceremony. After Ryan kissed her as his new wife, they found themselves surrounded by their friends, hugging them and congratulating them. Michaela met Ryan's eyes as she thought, I'm Mrs. Ryan Baker. Now she only had to wonder what Mrs. Holloway would say. Chapter 26 Michaela tucked the last few items into her suitcase and zipped it closed. She would never know how Ally had done it so fast, but on the strap of her bag was a luggage tag with Mrs. Baker written on it. Michaela smiled at the name. It had only been hers for a few days, but she knew she could get used to it. You ready? Ryan asked, stepping close behind her and wrapping his arms around her. Almost, she said. I thought you could load these while I go to the school. She turned into his embrace and placed a quick kiss on his cheek. Are you sure you don't want me to go with you? We could drop Nora off at Josie's first and then go. Michaela took a deep breath. She almost wished he could, but she shook her head. No, I need to do this. But we're in this together, he said. I know. But this is my job, and I need to face it myself. Ryan nodded before lowering his head and kissing her. He took his time and left her breathless before he pulled away. Whatever happens, I'll be here when you get back. She smiled. Yes, I know. A short while later, she knocked on Mrs. Holloway's door. The administrator called out for her to come in, and Michaela whispered a quick prayer for wisdom and calm nerves. Miss Wilkes, please come in. Thank you for seeing me on short notice. The woman waved a hand in the air. No problem. I have to be in the office today, but there's not much going on. She left. Michaela never heard her laugh. How was your Christmas? Michaela cleared her throat, glad that she seemed to be in a good mood, but ready to get this out in the open. It was wonderful, thank you. But I have some news I need to tell you. Mrs. Holloway's eyes widened and gasped. Please tell me you're not leaving us. Michaela hoped she wasn't. No, ma'am, not at all. I have no plans to go anywhere, and I hope to teach at Heritage Academy for a very long time. Phew, you gave me a scare. What is it then? Mrs. Holloway, I know that there are rules against teachers dating students' parents. The administrator narrowed her eyes and the friendly demeanor quickly disappeared. Yes, we do. Firm rules. Michaela nodded. Yes, I know. We met before when someone questioned my relationship with one of my students' father, Ryan Baker. She held her hands up in the air. Mrs. Holloway, I need you to know that we have tried very hard to abide by the rules. I haven't wanted to jeopardize my position here, or Nora's place in my class. We became friends, but I can assure you, we did not pursue a dating relationship. Mummy Mrs. Holloway pressed her lips together in a straight line. But? Michaela took a deep breath. But we have both realized, despite trying to stay apart and not pursue anything during the school year, that we have feelings for each other. Strong feelings. It seems that even when we tried to stay away, God was pushing us together. Because we didn't want to break a rule we knew we couldn't date. She paused and swallowed. Her heart threatened to pound out of her chest. So we got married. Mrs. Holloway didn't make a sound. Her eyebrows shot up and her mouth fell open, but she was silent. Michaela waited as she listened to the clock ticking away the seconds. She wondered if the woman would say anything at all, when finally she closed her eyes and pressed her hands together. Then she leaned her head back and laughed. Michaela was so shocked she couldn't move. Mrs. Holloway laughed and laughed. You got married? She asked. Yes, we did. On New Year's. Mrs. Holloway tried to compose herself. Well, 
I suppose, that went around the rules. I would never have thought of that. Michaela smiled. I wouldn't have either. But I have to admit, I think God always knew this was the plan. Mrs. Holloway sobered. Now, Miss Wilkes, she paused as if she knew that wasn't her name now. Michaela, please listen. I hope this is really what you want and not just a trick to get around a school policy. Michaela nodded. It's what we both want. Yes, we know it's not normal, but we both know we want to be married. So we could wait six months, date for a while, and eventually get engaged, but we're both sure. And we want to be together now. Mrs. Holloway nodded in agreement. I have to say, you're the last person I would have expected this of. While I don't agree 100%, I can appreciate that you tried to follow the rules instead of ignoring them. We've had teachers do that too. And I appreciate you being forthright to come and tell me now. I wouldn't have liked to hear this from someone else. No, ma'am. We do have teachers who are married and have their own children in their classroom, so there's definitely no rule against that. So you're saying I can stay? The administrator tapped her chin with her index finger. We would hate to lose a wonderful teacher like you. Michaela breathed a sigh of relief. I would hate to leave. I love Heritage and the family here. I meant it when I said I would like to be here for a long time. Mrs. Holloway nodded. Yes, we would like that too. I want to think about how we will present this information to the staff and faculty. But I believe you did what you thought was best within the boundaries of the policy. I don't believe any action needs to be taken. But please prepare yourself, some people will still believe the worst. I'm sure. I understand that was a risk we took. Very well, then. Have a good rest of your break. We'll see you on Monday, Mrs. Baker. Asterisk 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 Ryan stood in the driveway, loading the last few bags into the car. He turned at the sound of Michaela's car and watched his wife pull in. His wife. He knew he would get used to it, but he loved the sound of it. Hey, how'd it go? Michaela jumped out of the car and wrapped her arms around his neck as she kissed him. Great. Ryan's eyes widened. So you didn't get fired? Nope. Michaela shook her head. She actually laughed. Really? Mrs. Holloway? I know, it was shocking. But everything's fine. And what if she had fired you? Michaela looked thoughtful. I knew that was still a risk. I didn't want to put my job on the line by breaking the rules to date. I'm very, very glad that I get to keep my job, but I know that this was right for us. So if she had let me go, or put me on suspension, we would have worked it out. Together, Ryan said. Right. Michaela's eyes twinkled. Together. Ryan kissed her again, then kept his arms around her as he looked her in the eyes. Now, everything is packed. Our daughter is at her friend's for the next few days, and we're ready to leave for our honeymoon. He felt overwhelmed with gratitude to say those words. His daughter not only had a friend, but a mother who was here with her. He had friends, a heavenly father who had made a way for them, and the most beautiful wife. You ready? he asked. Michaela laughed. Mr. Baker, at this point, I'm ready for anything as long as you're with me. Me too, Mrs. Baker. As long as you're with me. Epilogue. Claire leaned against the wall and checked her watch for the tenth time. She'd promised herself she would stay for an hour, but she wasn't sure she could make it. The whole town must have shown up for Michaela and Ryan's reception. It had been over two months since the official ceremony, but the husband and wife had wanted to wait until spring break so they could leave for a trip together after the reception. The church fellowship hall was filled with people from one wall to the other. Soft music played under the hum of voices. The room was decorated beautifully with twinkle lights, and the tables were covered with lace and magnolia centerpieces. Michaela was radiant. She wore the dress she bought for their private ceremony, and Ryan wore a suit. She seemed to be floating around the room on her husband's arm. 
Claire was happy for her friend, but she was tired of coming to these events alone. The happy couple had cut their cake and danced their first dance. Claire had smiled and clapped along with everyone else. She'd made small talk with several parents from her class and a few people from church. Every one of them was there with their families. If anyone deserved to be married and start a family, it was Michaela. Claire had been shocked when she and Ryan got married without telling anyone. Sure, she thought they were crazy, but maybe love was a little crazy sometimes. She wouldn't know. She glanced around the room, looking over the faces of the guests. Ugh, why did they have to invite Deacon Miller? Maybe he was friends with Ryan. Didn't Michaela know she couldn't stand that guy? Of course, the bride didn't have to run the guest list by her friend. Still, Claire would be happy if she never saw that man again. Hey there, Michaela came over and wrapped Claire in a hug. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Claire pasted on a smile. I wouldn't have missed it. I know. It means a lot to me for you to be here. You mean a lot to me too, Claire said. And maybe someday, I'll forgive you for not telling me when you got married. She winked. Dot. Michaela reached out and touched Claire's arm. I'm sorry. I wanted to, but we really tried not to tell anyone. And I almost had a heart attack telling Mrs. Holloway that I was married. Claire's eyes grew wide. You're braver than me. I don't know if I could have told her. I might have just left town and never looked back. Michaela laughed. I wouldn't want to miss out on our new life with our friends here. Claire nodded. Michaela and Ryan fit right in with the other couples. In fact, Michaela had managed to stay friends with Emily and Ally even when she was the fifth wheel. Claire wasn't sure she would be very good at that. How long would her friendship with Michaela last if she were the single friend? As if she read her mind, Michaela nudged her. We would really like to have you over when we get back from our honeymoon. Thanks, that sounds like fun. When do you leave for that wedding weekend? Claire resisted the urge to roll her eyes. Another wedding. Another event when she would attend solo. It's the end of April. That's something to look forward to, Michaela said. Dot. I know. I'm excited for them. But being one of Sarah's bridesmaids is costing me a pretty penny. But you guys have been friends since you were kids, right? Michaela asked. Dot. Claire nodded. Our whole lives. We always promised we would be in each other's weddings. She shrugged. So here we are. Although, I doubt she'll ever have to return the favor. Oh come on, don't say that. Michaela said. You'll get your chance. I don't know about that. After that disastrous date with Brad, I don't know if I can ever try again. What happened exactly? I don't think you ever gave me the details. Claire covered her face with her hands. That's because it's too embarrassing. Let's just say it's worse than knocking him into the pool. She had no plans to tell anyone how she had managed to lock Brad's keys in his car at the restaurant, or how she had knocked his desert off the table onto his lap. She was pretty sure she had managed to prove to him that she was a complete klutz and it wasn't safe to be around her. At least that's what she assumed, since he never called again. Michaela covered her mouth with her hand, but the giggle burst out anyway. I'm sorry, she said around her laughter. I know it's not funny, but it's funny. Claire rolled her eyes, but she would laugh if it happened to someone else. It was hard to keep laughing when she was the one making the mistakes. Oh, don't be upset. Besides, maybe you'll meet someone at the wedding. Claire made a face to show her disgust. Most of the groomsmen are guys I went to high school with. I've already had my chance with them. Not to mention that Deacon Miller would be there. The one person she couldn't stand the sight of, and she would be in the same place with him for four days. She pushed thoughts of him aside and reached out to squeeze Michaela's hands. No, I'll just plan on being fun Aunt Claire to Nora. She flashed a smile. We are thrilled for that. Nora is so excited to stay with you while we're gone. 
I'm thrilled to have her. I already told her not to worry. We will have way more fun than you guys on your boring vacation. Michaela laughed even as she blushed. I'm sure you'll both have a great time. In case I haven't said it, I'm really happy for you and Ryan. Thanks. Michaela beamed with that glow only new brides have. I promise, we'll get together when we get back home. Claire smiled and nodded. She knew Michaela meant it. Maybe they would stay friends because Michaela was such a kind and intentional friend. Because of that, Claire was determined to be a supportive friend. She felt like giving up on the idea of having a future like Michaela had in front of her. No guy, no kids, no happily ever after. But she could still be a good friend. And who knows? Maybe being around the happy couple would give her hope that. Hope that sometimes dreams really do come true. This has been His Daughter's Teacher by Hannah Jo Abbott. Don't miss the next book in the series, Her Sister's Ex. Coming soon to this channel. For more information and books, visit www.hannahjoabbott.com. Be sure to subscribe, 